Hello and welcome to Frogcast Adventures. I am your host and DM, Joseph Blanchett, and I am happy to say that we have finally started our Curse of Straw D&D campaign. It's been um, a while coming, uh, but we just finished up our first session, and uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, background on the on the module before we get started in the adventure, uh, because we are actually running a, a modified version of Curse of Straw. Um, there are many uh, fan-made um, supplements for this module, and uh, one of them is by an individual known as Dragna Carta. Um, I'll give you a link to his um, Reddit master post and his Patreon in the description below, uh, but he is one of the many people who took it upon themselves to kind of revise Curse of Straw, expand on some of the themes, some of its weaknesses, and, um, you know, kind of do his own version of it and um, I came across this and uh, read that his goal was to, to keep the spirit of the original module um, but you know make it a little more concise a little more streamlined and uh, I started to read through it um, he's actually doing a big revision of a of, of um, the module it's called Curse of Strahd Reloaded and uh, he has a website and all that stuff and um, I thought it was a lot of good changes so I decided to use that as the backbone for uh, when I run it uh, so what you'll get is kind of you know um, Dragna Carta's uh, version of Strahd plus the books plus whatever my own little twists and additions are to it be a, uh, a combination of, of all those things um, as for the players this is the same group that played uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight and uh, many of the same players from Waterdeep Dragon Heist which I always thought was Kind of our strongest RP group, so I'm really happy to be running Curse of Strahd with them. Um, so we have Mark playing a Yanti paladin named Sir Horus. Um, he'll actually be playing two characters in this adventure. Um, uh, the, one of them only kind of really fit uh, when a little on, like a little later on in the adventure. So he, he said he'll, he'll play one character now and then another one later. Um, but we'll introduce him in a few episodes. Um, we have B Super Bunny Bun playing a elf bard named Vio. Uh, we have Jess, she's back, playing a tiefling sorcerer named uh, Romaya. Sorry. And we have Steph and Sam, the twins, back in this game. Uh, Sam's playing a orc druid named Grood. And Steph is playing a human artificer named Minerva. Um, again, I'm really excited to uh, kind of explore the the story and the characters for this group because I always thought they were, out of all our friend groups, they're kind of the best at the um, at the RP side of things. Uh, but this will be um, not like an RP focused adventure like Witchlight was. Like there's plenty of challenging encounters in this one too. So I'm excited to get into that when the time comes but um enjoy this session one of curse and Str of strahd um i go into a little detail about what the first few uh sessions will be like when we actually start the game um but i hope you stay with it all right enjoy all right so no, i'm this... just kidding i can't play anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no no sound effects during the game Unless it's really, really, really <laughs> funny. It's really, really funny. <laughs> um, all right, so just a couple things before we start. Um, told you all <laughs> that I am using a uh, kind of a community-made version of the module that does some changes and things like that. So I'll be um, going between, like, basically the the main book and then the supplement. So I kind of have to read things over twice. So it's going to take me a little while to get used to uh, the pace of that. So when we enter new rooms, it may take a little bit longer. Um, Loading. Gotta work, work on your prep, Joey. Well, I don't note memorize card. every single line. Sorry. You write, you write down. You write down stuff in a note card. I don't. I don't have physical note cards. Sorry. Oh God. It's all my brain. That's why I always wow. forget characters' names. I have to spend a minute looking up at the very top of the document. That here, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix you that right now in my display name. I'm gonna put uh, my character name. I've got mine in there already. Well, I meant oh, I meant like NPC names. Yeah. You you can always eventually uh, like make up a little cheat sheet or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that for this one because there's a lot of like German and Russian sounding names that I will not <laughs> be able to remember. Um, and to just set expectations a little bit for those not familiar, um, the opening chapter of this, uh, while it is part of the module, isn't necessarily like a uh, part of the, the larger storyline. It's more of a little introduction, like an optional introduction. Um, so, uh, well, we are starting tonight. It won't be really Curse of Strahd until we get through this opening chapter. But I think it's an important, um, an important, uh, in between thing to do. It, it, it's a it's a fun little module. I've I've run this. I like running this on Halloween, yep. um, in person. And you're doing the less deadly version. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let us begin. Oh crap! I need a character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need your two characters. <laughs> <laughs> that you know of. Should have. Ambience. Uh, and just, just one last thing, Joey. Yes. I know that, just for sound, I know that you have a lot of these things on roll 20 that mm. are doing sound effects, and I assume you're using... Um, uh, D DJ Strahd, the Discord bot. Yeah, for, Kenku, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're using, using that for, like, probably combat music and some ambience or, or, or sound bars. Ambience. Soundboard stuff. Okay, just wanted, in case I need to, like, adjust the volume, I just want to make sure you're using, like, both things. or. All music's going to be okay. through Roll20. Um, okay, okay. Unless for some reason I don't, but I don't plan on doing it right now. Okay. Yep. Right. You find yourself in the town of Daggerford, and despite the clouds, despite the rain, the town is abuzz with excitement. For you are arriving during high, tar high harvest tide, and not even a little rain can ruin such a celebration. Even if you're just passing through, or call this quaint town your home, you are drawn to the river, sh the river Shining Tavern, a bastion of celebration during this otherwise dreary night. Although the hour is late, the busy bar welcomes you as they drink, sing, and secretly curse the coming of winter. There's plenty of night left, and there's no plans of stopping anytime soon. As a band of travelers and adventurers, you warm yourself both by hearth and by spirits alike. Please introduce yourself as you spend the remainder of this night celebrating with the local town folks of Daggerford. We shall start with start with you, Bun. Oh man. Uh, I was. Uh, uh, my character is Vio. Uh, a. Uh, what am I again? Oh yeah. Uh, he is a. Good start. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, he is a uh, <laughs> high elf we uh, wearing uh, bas uh, like uh, semi fancy uh, uh, silken clothes, but most of it is a um, like raven black. Uh, uh, whereas a uh, what would that uh, basically a triangular hat um, and uh, a white What's brim. What's your hat? Uh, carrot. Uh, uh, carries a uh, violin uh, that is uh, strapped to his back, as, as well as uh, a uh, as well as a rapier uh, on the uh, uh, on his uh, uh, belt hilt. Right, and your name is Vio. Yep. You kind of look like kind of like 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 a, a, a pilgrim kind of dress. No, not. Not as such. Yeah, cool. uh, a little that. more You're fanciful. Good. Okay. Or, or, or um, a, like, uh, is is obvious or right? more more performer uh, quality uh, uh, clothes. Okay. How about we'll just go down the um in the order of the icons here. How about you, Sam? 
Uh, okay. So there's this big hulking orc that smells a little off, but it's also like an earthy smell. Uh, he's a really laid-back guy, just wearing a robe, probably never been washed before, and just, just filling in the vibe, you know? There's also a little squirrel running around. Running around, running around the, 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 the bar, all the people that drop their peanuts. Yeah, if there's like barnets or maybe like I can see Groot like feeding him them too. So this is either either a very good friendly bar or like a really nice steakhouse with all the peanuts on the floor. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. steakhouses where you throw the peanut shells on the floor. <laughs> uh, there's a five guys in the corner. <laughs> there, there, no, there's just five guys in the corner. <laughs> is that us? Five guys approach you. <laughs> um, You're talking about guys. We should make our own. Sandwich place with, with heated heated meat. Oh, it's gonna be great. Where people can go in and out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you taste their food. Wow, what a burger! Wendy McDonald, that is the worst idea you've ever had. <laughs> All right, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Mark Wahlberger. Um, how about how about you? We just... call it Harvey here. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> I don't know, A and W, whatever. <laughs> we, have, we have Canadian ones. <laughs> uh, how about you, Jess? Um, very out of place <laughs> for such a tavern. Or it's a family. Not, it's a family know. restaurant. Their kids. A, this isn't Fantasy Hooters, I suppose. <laughs> um, for all intents and purposes, she looks like probably a gargoyle. Uh, is, is the best way to describe what she looks like. A tiefling. Um, pure black skin with red scales. Um, pointed, oddly shaped, like, up horns. They're kind of pointed angles. Um, that have, like, red. And you can, you can kind of get this motif across her, her whole body where she's got red scales and red makeup, red eyes, red on her horns and on her tail and around her, her hooves um, and then from her back she's got two wings like scaly almost dragon looking wings um, and uh, she's dressed to the nines in black and gold silks and she's wearing quite the ensemble <laughs> um, probably not terribly family friendly as you know the, the girls are just out to play, basically. Um, and her name is. Her name is Romaya. Romaya, tiefling's not too unusual, but like you're definitely getting some looks. Yeah, she's she's just kind of sitting. Probably not because, everybody. not just because of the tiefling thing. No. Um, yeah, so she's definitely just kind of sitting there puffing away on a on a fancy um, white pipe. It's kind of like a dragon. There's like a couple eating food, but the guy keeps on looking over, and the and the woman's like, "Gerald, get eyes over here. Eat your." Every food. time, every time he looks, she like winks and waves, like wiggles her finger, her fingers in a way. Oh, and she has like, I, like I'm sure this is what, this was a universal experience for everybody, where they had a teacher who was just who wore gold rings, tons of gold rings, and like bangles <laughs> and stuff, and so as she's like waving her fingers you can hear the rings like clacking together and you can hear the bangles like moving on her arm yeah um mark you see before you a uh, somewhat tall uh lightly lightly tan skin mostly you know, maybe like like european nice tan thing a, a tall human i'm sorry a uh, young t um looks very human uh, very very passable human it was young t um with these nice, uh, like robes that are that are very clean and, and pristine, and they are over a very heavy set of armor that uh, he has. He has a very large kite seal that he has with him, and um, uh, he's probably being very jovial, just to whoever or whomever is around him, just striking up conversation. He's got these sort of a uh, little bit of like tattoos on his face that kind of, uh, for lack of a better description, tribal markings, although he's not part of any tribe, it just kind of gives that feel feel of it. Uh, he is a paladin, his name is Sir Horus. 
Is his first name horse or his last name horse? Yes. Mm. <laughs> That's part of my character arc. It's finding out. <laughs> um, how about you, Steph? Last but not least. <coughs> Uh, you'll look over and you'll see a bookish woman, uh, probably uh, not super tiny, about five seven five eight, um, wearing spectacles. She is fairly well dressed, so almost like a like a librarian. She's wearing trousers and a blouse with a with a vest, but it's not specific specifically clean. There's a little bit of um, grease and uh, staining on it. Um, she's wearing a series of spectacles as well as almost like jeweler's glasses. Uh, they're not all down at the moment. And, um, in her, uh, messy bun, there is a pen. Her, her, sorry, and, um, on her fingers is covered in ink. Um, she's probably scrawling in a journal, uh, thinking up different designs and contraptions. Uh, and her name is Minerva Makeshift. Okay. She's very much inspired by um, Rachel Weiss from the Mummy movies. Yep, that's why I told uh, I told Mel with the token art. I said, just look at her. Get the vibe. She looks like the kind of person that would knock over an entire row of, of, of uh, books, bookshelves. Do you think she's like the clumsy sword, or...? Oh yeah, yeah. I know in the beginning she's clumsy, but it it'd be more. I could I could definitely see her if she starts hyper focusing, um, running into stuff just yeah. because she's like I've got an idea and she just like has to do it um, right away and so could could trip over things. Not brute trip level though. <laughs> no, I really wanted that randomized die for fun, but that yeah. It was <laughs> so um, we're kind of a little scattered during our, our session zero. Some people couldn't make it, so we didn't. We kind of discuss the reason of all traveling together, kind of in different um, different chats. But um, from what I remember, um, Minerva, Groot, and Vio were kind of a, a traveling um, a traveling group. Um, Romaya, you joined them because you needed passage, safe passage um, while traveling. And Sir Horace, you met them on the, their travels and uh, volunteered to be like a spiritual guide or like a something like that. Bodyguard guide. We're yeah. going the same way anyway. Might as well strengthen numbers. Mm -hmm. You have my sword and my shield. Oh, I have a mace. Yes, yeah, so now, now that you've traveled together for a little bit, like, what are your opinions of of everyone? You would think as you enjoy this um, this meal and this celebration. I enjoy the company of company. Being around more people is uh, always better for the uh, feeling. Um, I wish that that tiefling would wear a little more, mainly because it's cold out. He could get sick. And that um, that wizard, or the uh, the bard, probably needs to work on his uh, uh, tuning his violin. But I don't say that out loud to them. That would be rude. Hmm. I kind of asked that question to like everyone. Like, what's whatever your right? I just went first. The <laughs> immediate opinions of yeah of everyone. Do you think? Rude will go next. Sure. Uh, everyone's like mostly like pretty good, but like that glasses girl is sometimes too focused. You gotta smell the roses sometimes. Like, it's, it's more than don't you get lost in the trees in the forest, right? Like that horse guy, he's he's like really focused on stuff, but like doesn't actually see, you know. I think the chillest one is Ramaya. Like. Just letting it all hang out and everything, like right on. And then, like Vio is like also a little bit, maybe it's stuck up. Like his cloak, though. I 
kind of meant that as like you can RP amongst yourselves if you wish. <laughs> okay. We're oh, just kidding oh, everybody's oh. internal monologue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually it. Okay. I thought we we're doing internal monologue. Yeah. No, I like internal monologue because it kind of gives like <laughs> we panned each panned yeah. each person. Yeah. Hold on one yeah. moment. Hey, you don't the know what I'm is, thinking. It's entirely <laughs> monochromatic, and we're all just hearing the inner voice. <laughs> I know you can I'm just sitting in silence, noise. just thinking. What was that? What was that, Jess? I know you can read my thoughts, boy. <laughs> Would you please get that squirrel under uh, control? I'm not worried about it harming anybody. I just, I think it's gonna run off and maybe just get attacked by the local wildlife. No, nah, no, nah, these, these is good. Like it's, it'd be actually worse if I had to. Yeah, like put him in captivity. Well, at least keep him close to you. Maybe put a bell on him. So Scrolls know. at another table, like just just waiting for the guests to turn their heads so it can grab like a little French fry from the table. I just had an image of him like the, the squirrels like starting like a illegal illicit poker game. He's got like a visor on, like the colored visor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he just, like, I just let him do what he wants, and, like, it's pretty okay, usually. And if he gets into trouble, he usually can get himself out. So, like, don't worry about it. It's, it's cool. Uh, Where Vero is innocently drops some peanuts from, this, from the uh, bar stool. Oops. <laughs> Sir Horace, oh, you drop these. Let me pick them up for you. He does that thing where he puts, like, leftovers in his cheeks, and they get all, get all big. <laughs> like, over and, like, he goes a chipmunk. <laughs> They do that. Squirrels do that too. Oh, yeah. For sure. Cheek pockets. <laughs> Minerva, what are you writing down in your in your little notebook? Hmm? What? Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um Well, um I have been experimenting and thinking about different things and um you know, since there's all of you together and you all use different things to to do whatever you do, um, I was thinking maybe I could just figure out processes. Or, like, um, oh, I don't know. There's just so many options, so I'm just trying to boil it down to different things. Uh, you find yourself a, a swordsmith or a... Uh... No, not, not as brutish as a swordsmith, per, per se, but, um, like, I, I like taking things and making them better. I like to give little, uh, little bonuses. Oh, you're, you you're know, an improvenist. Yes, I, I actually quite like that word. Improvenist. Um, <laughs> you're improvenistic. So, so sometimes I just get these little ideas of things. Sometimes they don't make any sense at all. Uh, and sometimes they do later. So I always try and keep notes uh, just in case I can figure out what I was trying I like, to think I like of. to imagine, like, you saw the spoon, you saw the fork, and you go, this can be improved. You can combine <laughs> even. I but, just... but, she, but she's not, is she good at it where she's making a proper spork or is she like one of those persons like, what if we take half a spoon and half a fork? Split down the middle and then fuse them together. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a level two. Uh... And then attach a rocket. You're faster <laughs> reading. I, it is now spinning oh. faster than the human eye can see and can burrow <laughs> through wood. I would actually like to peer over into whatever she is writing. Like, see if I get like a, a just a glance excuse me, of some of her just previously written down ideas. So it wouldn't be written so much in like um, linear text and like paragraphs and stuff. It would be like brainstorming and like so there would just be different ideas, you know, word like bubble. The, word bubbles. Yeah, yeah, like word bubbles and like drawings and then like questions of like you know like amethyst and like different different Question things. Question like uh, so, uh, no, Notations you would be taking in class at yeah. uh, college or something. Absolutely yeah. nonsensical. All of it is in separate sections of the page. Yeah. yeah, or like it scrolls across the gutter in the center, um, so it, it does. <laughs> it circles the entire page. <laughs> yeah, I, so um... it, you could like I don't think I I don't feel like Minerva would want to hide it from you, but she also wouldn't really wouldn't want to sh be like, look, look what I did. It's like it's very would... much for her. Yeah, this is uh, me trying to like peer over your shoulder. Yeah, so like, just to get a glance, not to like 
just to read up as if it were like a diary that I'm just seeing like, oh, what an idea she has. Yeah, like I, um, so I'm not afraid of stealing ideas or anything, so I don't go to um, hide it or anything, but I also don't overly care that you're reading it. Original um, character do not steal. Yeah, this is cynic. I kind of, oh. I kind of leave over to Grood as I as I take a look and I and I go, I, I don't think a what is that a scope is going to work on a on a long sword. What do you think? Like, have you tried it? Yeah, yes, once. Nothing well, then wrong okay. With improvisation. <laughs> It's, I mean, it. I, I could be wrong. I'm not saying it, it can't be done, but I don't see the tactical uh, advantage of having a sight on a, on a sword. Just because it doesn't work for you doesn't mean it doesn't work for anyone else. I, I suppose that is fair. I am not criticizing. I am merely opining. That's, That's really cool, cool that you tried it, though. Uh, I mean, what if you're trying to stab something very small? Oh, I mean, <laughs> very far away. If it had, <laughs> if it had magnification, per perhaps. Uh, I find that having to uh, stab things small, it's more about accuracy and, and quickness before they have a chance to move. Although I'm not a stabber, I am a uh, swinger. Um. I imagine Romania <laughs> looks over as I say that, as I as I take out my mace. Um, let's see, this this hits from all angles. Yeah, so Romania, around okay. around, around this time, uh, one of the waiters cool. comes by with a little like mar a martini glass, and so goes um goes a uh, another drink from a admirer, and he puts it on the table, and uh, he points to this um kind of like. Ragged look, like, like looking like a minor, not a minor, minor, but like a, a um, <laughs> an ore worker, an ore worker type, real like dirty. <laughs> he like looks over, gives you a wave and a wink. A minor, not minor. <laughs> I don't follow. She, uh, is he cute? No. <laughs> she kind of like puts her free hand on her chest she takes the the drink she like it, like the, the gif of leo and the great gatsby you know whatever <laughs> a bunch of his, his friends like start laughing and like playfully like uh shoving him like it was almost like a like oh, like i dare you to do it you know type of thing and... hmm. um she'll like hold the drink and she'll like she won't take a sip from it she'll just kind of like mm, you know like whatever and then as soon as he turns away she like throws it over <laughs> her shoulder Right to the fire. Uh. So you you came to this tavern pretty late while the um, festivities were still going, but probably sooner than you would have liked. Start things start to to wind down, and the uh, tavern begins to empty. So. Oh, thank goodness, it's starting to quiet down now. I'm able to bring my thoughts together. I'm going to do this one thing with this sword, this one thing with this scope, and they definitely don't go together. <laughs> so, get ready for for a long paragraph cutscene time. Um, as the night winds down, the Riverside Tavern empties. Residents return home, and guests retire to their rooms. Unfortunately, no rooms remain for you. You simply arrived too late. An older farmer approaches you and offers you a place to stay dry for the night. It's not much, he admits, and you might have to share the barn with a sheep or two, but at least you won't be out in the rain. He then gives you directions to his residence near the edge of town. Grateful for the offer, you step out into the quiet and empty streets. Fog covers the now increasingly quiet streets of Daggerford, and you make your way to tonight's lodgings. You hesitate a moment, but continue forward. It's only a short walk. What could possibly go wrong? But as you travel to the outskirts, the mist thickens. The sounds turn to a whisper. And the pitter-patter of raindrops disappears. A deafening silence as the world around you turns to a swirling cloud of silver. All sense of direction is lost. 
blinded by the sudden appearance by the sudden appearance of the fog. Where are you? You just left the tavern, you remind yourself. Was that tonight? It's hard to think. With no better course of action, you continue to march forward. A moment later, you hear your own footstep you hear the sound of your own own footsteps making contact with a cobblestone road. The mist begins to part and the rain returns. And on either side and on either side of you you see dreamlike vistages of tall buildings that raise like tombstones from the earth. With each step the world around you becomes more lucid. And suddenly you pierce the veil. A grand manor stands before you. Four stories of cold, soot-stained stone, tall, narrow windows, and a high-peaked roof forming a picture of a... of a luster, chilling grandeur. It's not the word, but I don't know what it is. Uh, midway up... Chilling grandeur. I think they've seen grandeur as, like, as a, 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 a noun about the... how it... No, I mean, the, a stare. Yeah. A stare. Yeah. yeah. Chilling grandeur. Oh. Midway up. Turn this volume down a little bit. Uh, to do. Midway up, a narrow balcony juts out from the third floor, offering a grim perch from which to survey the surrounding grounds. The centerpiece of this imposing facade is the portico. Not sure what that is. A st well, a stone arch standing sentinel before the house's oaken doors. A wrought iron gate fills this arch, and its husty, rusty hinges creaking as it sways in the wind. On either, either side of the gate, oil lamps hang from chains, their, dim, their light dim and flickering, casting a sickly glow that barely pierces the surrounding fog. fog. Beyond the gate, a set of sturdy oaken doors stand closed, framed by the gate and the lamps. The doors are old and weathered, their wood darkened by time, but they stand strong and proud, an unwelcome entrance to the house beyond. A gust of wind sweeps past you, carrying with it a whisper of cold dread that sends shivers down your spine. As if guided by an untold instinct, you take a step forward and reach for the door, grasps, grasp the handle, and enter. So at this moment, you kind of gain full sense of your, your, uh, of your, um, Falcates, sorry, <laughs> your, your Fal, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, consciousness. Falcates, I just can't say it. Faculty. Faculty. Faculties. No, faculties. 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 Millennium Faculty. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> off to a good start, Joey. Um, <laughs> And like it's just the past few moments has almost been like a dream, and you suddenly find yourself at the entrance of this old manor that you had no <laughs> no no intention of going to. Well, we're here. Uh, Did anybody else notice that it was it's like walking through a dream? Yeah, that's kind of weird, but like similar, but weird. Yeah, pre-rendered even. This... Something feels wrong. I mean... Everything feels wrong, but... Does anyone really remember how we got here? Left the tavern, walked forward, and then just kept walking. I don't recall remember. this being across the street from it. No, there was an entire city. And although you are um, uh, in the map outside the house, like you've like taken a step in. It'd be like over over in the the foyer. Yeah, like Portico right here. foyer. This is uh, the architecture notably different than the place that we were in where we wouldn't we'd be like no this is definitely not like the bad side of town this is elsewhere yeah um the uh the look of the house 
looked like much older than like the houses in Daggerford that you that you you saw when you entered. Have a still have a strange compulsion to sort of keep walking in to a stranger's possibly stranger's house. I'll take a step into the foyer. Do we, uh, do we take hello? off our shoes? Do we? I mean, I'll look. I don't down wear shoes. But... That's for you. <laughs> is it? Is it muddy? Is it dirty? Does it oh. look like it's dirt's been tracked in prior to us being coming in here? So, a lot of these rooms don't have like written descriptions, so I'll read through kind of here. Yeah, I know the. A a wide hall runs the width of the house with a marble. Black marble fireplace. That's that's the next that's the next room. This should be room number two if you have the same the same uh, map layout. Well, you're okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we're we're in the we're in the foyer. Sorry, John. I know I specifically know those two room descriptions. <laughs> It'll be easier for you all walk in. <laughs> I did after you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, yeah. I'll... So you want to then um, hanging on the south wall of the foyer is a sh shielded, emblazoned, um, is a shield emblazoned with a coat of arms, flanked by framed portraits of a Sony faced aristocrats. recognize any of them uh, the pictures yes yeah, sorry I, was, I just had the next room as the uh no i know i know <laughs> do, you... do i recognize any of the aristocrats being famous nobles of any place that i have uh frequented give me a quick history check first roll of the game and it's a minus two. Roll. Four. Four. <laughs> uh, you do not recognize these individuals. One can only assume that these gentle folk are the owners of this property, and they will not be upset of us heading on in. And kind of says that confusedly as he uh, opens the door to the next room. Like I didn't think of that looking at them, but like let's go. Like if you're feeling it, let's... I mean, I don't... something. Dude. Can we click on the doors to open them, or is that something that you have to do, Joey? I've um, never used the doors. In... Go ahead and click on it. Should open. Ooh, yeah, it does. Both, both, both of them. For an old farmhouse, this seems. Very old. You can definitely tell this is not a farmhouse. This is perhaps the people who owned the farmland but did not work on it, if anything. Hmm. See here. A black marble fireplace on one end and a sweeping red marble staircase on the other. But as soon as you enter the main hall, the um, the the, the, the uh, door behind you slams shut. Perhaps by the wind, but it's pretty forceful. Yeah. Uh, I'll try the door. Uh, it's locked. <laughs> um, not locked, but the uh, and any like lamps that were lit suddenly go out. And uh, you hear the ticking of a grandfather clock. Um, then, as quickly as it, uh, as the lights went out, reappears. The lights, the the the, the lights flicker back, and uh, above and on the southern wall, just above the marble staircase, there are bloody letters written into the wall and it reads to do it reads 
Beneath, beneath this dwelling lurks a beast who hungers for a bloody feast. He sleeps until the midnight chime, then wakes to feed his dark design. If, morsel, if morsels seek to flee their doom, then bring towards his then bring towards his secret room a gift to soothe his savage mood but mind the servants of his brood and as you look at the uh, <laughs> letters that appear um the grandfather clock begins to chime begins to dong Find it. Well, I believe I know why we have been summoned here. And I don't like it. Wait, does that mean that we have to go to a secret room like right now? I'm sorry, I had this plan, but the uh the um the clock rings six times. Signifying that it is six o'clock. Okay, okay, cool. Cool. Must be PM. But the odd thing is that you arrived in town town well after 6 p.m. It's 6 a.m. Hmm. I don't think we were drinking for that long. Okay. It definitely seems to be a bit of information that we're missing. And it definitely seems to be more than just a trick of the wind. Seeing all those bloody letters up there. Did the, the, the foyer door shut, or did the doors to the, the porch shut? Uh, I think the front doors is the ones that would have shut. Um, Vio, do you try to there. open them back up? Uh, yes. Okay. One thing you notice is that the sound of rain completely stopped as well. In Vio, um, as you open up the front door, which are unlocked, you're able to open. Um, you're not quite sure what you see in front of you. But it takes a moment to realize that it's almost like vines are now covering the entrance to the house, but they're like fleshy and moist and like pulsating. Okay. Mr. Vio, what, uh, what, what do you have there? Um, here, uh, words cannot describe. Uh, just take a look. I'll look at it. Yeah, it sees like fleshy tendrils are, are blocking the way out. Minerva also looks. Ugh, it's disgusting! It is quite unsanitary. Oh, I guess there are words that describe it then. <laughs> Crude's like, whoa, I've I, like, never seen this before. Like, whoa. Gentlefolk, I believe that we have been summoned here as a quest. Or, or captured. Possibly. However. One thing, way, one thing does catch your eye before y'all continue is um, above the, above, uh, the fireplace is a um, is a portrait of a family. Um, of a man and a woman and two small children, a boy and a girl. And uh, the girl is is holding a doll with a the yellow dress, a, a yellow lace dress. And a plaque beneath the portrait reads, Mr. Gustav and Miss Elizabeth Durst and their two children, Rosa Valda and Thornbolt. Well, I believe these are the owners of the mansion. Perhaps they are home. And uh, Sir Royal also shout outs. Mr. Gustav! Mr. Durst! Just echoes. Yes. Young Rosavalda? Young Thornhalt? Anyone? You just hear the chicken. We do not miss to intrude, however, we have been forced to. 
You just hear the ticking of the grandfather clock. Maybe they're somewhere they can't hear us. Well, I Cabin hope room. they're not home at all. He looks an awful lot like a client of mine, and I'd rather not get in trouble. <laughs> Oh, where are we? Where are we start looking? Like, I guess. I don't know. Like, what's over here? <laughs> There's like two doors. Oh, cool! The little door icons. Yep. So <laughs> anywhere with the um, door icon, you can open by yourself. Oh, that's so cool! Oh, cool! I found like I don't know pantry. <laughs> that's probably not helpful, actually. It's like whoa, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> dude! They have they have closets. I assume yeah. the thing on the left is a fireplace? Yes. Yeah. It is unlit. Is there anything in this spot lit? Is it just closet? Yep. Hold on one minute. Like I said, I'm, I'm using two different um, two different things here, so I need to just... Dude, did you, what's in there? I just yeah, gotta look up both of them at once. Looks like a dining room up here. Okay, the, um, Groot, as you quickly open the first door you find, you're like, whoa, doors! Um, this yeah. appears to be a cloak room. Um, to do... To, to be... Sorry, I just gotta find this. Yep, and you see a, um... This holds just just people's um people's cloaks, people's jackets. Can can she tell if um everyone's coats are there? You know, like when people are they're at home, they have all their stuff there. Mm -hmm. Or if they're gone, it's like missing. There's like um holes, almost like of like where coats should be. It's definitely it's definitely full. Um, it's kind of unremarkable. Uh, but you do know that outside of one of the pockets, um, there is an envelope. Quite noticeable. I, I'm not even in front of that door. That's Vio. No, the, that was when you opened the closet. Yeah. That was the description. No, that's Vio's cloakroom. This... Isn't it Vio? It's, it's in front of, the door in front of Vio, isn't it? The store was open right here. That's what I was doing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought from where I am, the door is also open in front of Vio. Okay. So I thought it was through there. I think. I yeah, think. I'm grabbing that envelope. Clicked. Yeah. Oh, I got moved. Yeah, I was just making sure. Um... Right. You see a envelope which is addressed to Lady Lovina Watcher. And it reads, You are cordially invited to join Mr. Gustav and Elizabeth Durst for a celebration of the one-year anniversary of the Durst Mill. The Durst residence, Barovia Village, 6 o'clock p.m., 13, Navar, 348, dinner and refreshments to be served. You can maybe see this was a uh, invitation to some sort of sort of, um, event. Who's gonna, like, keep it with him? Like, I think... I don't know if we, like, sneak in and use this invitation to get it in. Do you think... Is that... This is really weird, man. Does the... Go ahead. Uh, Via will ask to see the invitation. Groot hands it over. Left it over. Um, what was the name of this uh, of this town again? Daggerford. Well, Daggerford was where we left. Yeah. Oh um, shoot, you're right. Where's this Barovia? Never heard of it. Does the year match up? Like we haven't time traveled, have we? We don't have a year. Uh, thirteen like... Neviar three forty eight. That is the that... year. That's the address. Is it? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. It, it, it feels like it would be a fantasy year and date. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just like the area code. 
Area code one. Because <laughs> there was only <laughs> one area. Um, I'd like to roll to see if I know where that. Nope, oh. it's a calendar. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but it's the Barovian calendar. That is the 13th of Naviar, 348. Can, uh, can really? I see if I know what Bjorn oh, Okay, that makes Bjorn. sense. Yeah. As a, hu- as a human, I don't know that. And I don't think Rude also does not know that. Well, give me um history check, see if you've heard of um, Barovia. And, uh, and definitely the date doesn't make sense for whatever you know, calendar the, the Forgotten Realms have. Like It does not match up. It would. It would. Sir Horace, just, Sir Horace just notices the date. And that's it. Yeah. He notices it's formatted like a date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the coordinates. Um, <laughs> Gru, you're well traveled. You've never heard of a Barovia before. As far as I'm concerned, this place is made up. I, I believe we're here. It'll be hard to use the invitation then. Mm-hmm. Um. Wait. Uh, Veal will give it back to the way. And you can tell by, like, the names match up with the people in the portrait. Um, Veal, did you open up the, the like, this door right here? Uh, I did, but, um, when I was over here. Okay. So, as you approach that door, um, you hear a dinner party. Huh. Uh, open it. You can plug. But it only it only appears like as you approach, you begin to hearing like there's an obvious like dinner party happening. Uh, it doesn't yeah. go away if I open the door. You open the door and to do as soon as you open the open it, it does go silent, and you see a empty room, empty dining room, in front of you. Oh. I guess I won't know what, what's so hilarious. Uh, and I'll go inside and check it out. Yep. Rude knows that Vio is a bit squishy and will go right behind him. <laughs> Before Sir Horace follows there after hearing them start to move in, he'll, he'll be over at the uh, spiral staircase and look up. Anything catch his eye? Um evil chandelier about to fall and crush me. Here. You look up and you see that uh, the wood panel walls are kind of like sculpted with um, images of nymphs and, and, and satyrs and vines and flowers. I'll keep that to myself as I begin to head on. Uh, I am right beside you, oh, as Minerva, no. and I'm like, I, "What are you looking at?" <laughs> oh, but the um, the, the stairs obviously lead up to another floor. You notice, uh, Miss Minerva. Uh, uh, please think if there's something up there. Anybody looking down? Nobody. Nobody at Ooh. all. There was a whole yeah, bunch of cool. laughter. Immediately went away. Of course, I don't have good feelings about this, but hopefully I'll be able to figure out some new things. Uh, the rest of the yeah, party yeah. went this way. Uh, yep. Perhaps we could create a people finder of sorts. Ma- Mania? Yes? Uh, you, do you just want to stand there and look pretty, or are you going to come and make sure that we don't split the party? Ooh. Oh, well, I was going to check this room, but yes, I suppose. Well, I guess as long as... Is there hitting on her? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez, we just started. Steph, stop. <laughs> oh, oh uh, we'll do um, Vio's room first, and we'll we'll get to Ramona's. Um, Ramona's. Yeah. Um, Let's all right. Stick out here so we don't, yeah. like, super split up. Uh, you enter Water. into a wood... Water. You enter into a wood panel dining room. The centerpiece is car is a carved mahogany table surrounded by eight high back chairs with sculpted armrests and cushioned seats. A crystal chandelier, hey, hangs above the table, which is set with a resplendent silverware and crystal glass glasses polished to a dazzling shine. Mounted above the marble fireplace is a mahogany framed painting of a alpine veil. The wall paneling is carved with elegant images of deer running running among trees. Red silk drapes cover the windows, and a tapestry hangs from an iron rod bolted 
to the south wall. The table groans beneath the weight of a delicious-looking feast. Exquisite dishes lay in grand platters. Succulent roasted poultry glazed with shimmer shimmering honey sauce. Perfectly grilled cuts of beef still s steaming si slightly. <laughs> Sorry, still steaming lightly. And varies in variety of cheeses and fresh fruit. And freshly baked breads give off a comfort a comforting aroma. So you walk in to see this feast just at a table with no one sitting at it. Oh, well, they can't be far if uh, their meal is already set. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, don't put any of that in your mouth. I've seen things. Like, you've probably seen things too, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, g given the walls are bleeding uh, letters, uh, I don't think I'm going to trust it. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a huge health thing, right? Health and safety first. It's also impolite, and we haven't been invited to the meal. So true, man. Do uh, I just like to kind of leave then? Like... I don't think any of us, either of us, are taking the bait. So, no. you can probably move to the other room. Wrote, right, where Maya, <laughs> you can open up a room in front of you. Squeaky. She'll peek her, her head around. As you crack the door open to this room, you catch a glimpse of something, <laughs> of something f feral beyond. An amber eye that flashes in the darkness, and a bestial muzzle curled into a snarl. <laughs> She'll probably pull her head back, close the door. She has, she like turns around, so she like her hands are still on the doorknob. It's like you open it up, and like just for a glimpse, you think you see a, a, an animal inside. What's well, I'm in pretty there? sure that there are dogs or wolves of some sort, so probably best we don't alert them. Why not? There's literally a bloody message on the wall up there saying that there's a brood going around in this place. Of course we shouldn't alert them. Also, we are strangers to this home, Sir Horace. Perhaps. You're free to feed them. yourself to the dogs if you so wish, but I don't. <laughs> I fear no dogs, especially tamed pets who could oh. bring us to their masters. If you will please step aside, I will lead in and protect you in case they attack. Something tells me this man's going to die. <laughs> she like kind of mumbles to herself <laughs> and motions for him like, by all means, you go right ahead. And she like, eh, she's just hides behind Groot. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. I will open the door. <laughs> Shield ready. Yep. Uh, good over who's who's a good boy? boy? At least it'll be interesting. <laughs> uh, the door cracks open, revealing a gray-furred wolf frozen into place. It's only a moment before you realize that it's not moving, and another, <laughs> and another before you realize that it's not alone. This oak, uh, uh, oak paneled... Oh, go ahead. Well, actually, Joey, can I, can I respond to that? Um... I very quickly uh, realize that. I do a quick glance at everybody out watching me, and I go, uh, Time stop! There, you are safe now. Come on in. I'll walk in. Oh my god. As you were saying, Jerry. <laughs> this oak-paneled room looks like a hunter's den. Mounted above the fireplace. <laughs> well, fireplace is here. Is a stag's... I guess that's how they kept warm. Is a stag's head... And positioned around the outskirts of the room are two additional stuffed wolves, a large gray wolf and a smaller brown wolf. Two padded chairs, chairs draped in animal furs face the hearth, with an oak table between them, supported, supporting an assortment of objects. A chandelier hangs above a, cl a cloth-covered table surrounded by four chairs, and two cabinets stand against the wall. A pair of small toys seem to have been forgotten beneath one of the chairs. Just head on in. 
It's, it's okay. The time has been stopped. Everything in here is now unmovable. It also seems like it's a taxidermy room, Sir Horse. You got me. I'm a little jovial today. <laughs> it is safe, I believe. My little trickster. <laughs> My little pranks. I just like having oh. fun here. <laughs> I will uh, peek out the window as it's still covered in horrible um, War of the Worlds vines. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you open it up and it's just like, bleh, 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 and then you close it yeah. real fast. It's like, yep, still, still horrible. That's just the sound that that's the sound it's making outside. It's literally bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> All well, I guess there's nothing in this room. Um. I'd like to. Uh, oh, was there anything in this room? And then, like, or um, I was going to investigate as well before. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want, you want to spend some time? A, like to investigate. Okay. So, if you investigate a room, um, it does take a little bit of time. <laughs> just so you know. Is it like uh, 10 minutes or is it closer to like a half an hour? Take approximately 20 minutes for gameplay purposes to fully okay. search a room. Um, so if we're like, looking like, for everything and not yeah. dancing around. Yeah, I guess that's... Okay, so um, with that information known, I don't feel like this room would be worthy of like actual time needed yeah. to do that, so I didn't okay. actually investigate that uh, room. A quick glance, though, you, um, you do notice the toys... Like the children toys, toys. Um, under oh, the chairs. Yeah. Um, you say you look at the the toy. Uh, I'll I'll pick them up. Yes. Yep. Uh, I'll also remind you what it says. Um, it's two, uh, two two cabinets against the wall and a pair of small toys. Um, okay. Okay, so the toys are are small, plush gray wolves whose threadbare coat show evidence of heavy mending and patchwork. You notice that clumsy, that clumsy stitch work on their stomachs read Rose and the other one reads Thorn, respectively. Minerva's going to go over to under the the taxidermy wolves and see if there's something underneath their, them as well. I get, No, I, I can't. I don't know if I saw... If, if Theo tells me that that's what's going on with the toys, then I'll do that. Well, that was underneath oh, right. one of the chairs. Um, the uh, taxidermy wolves, um, you give them a quick look over. There's nothing All right, cool. special Thank about them. Uh, give me a, a nature check. Or, yeah, a nature check, though. Can I pet one, Joey? You pet the, you, this game. You can't pet the doggos. No. <laughs> oh, careful, Morris! This one's looking like it's animating, and tosses one of the yeah. uh, the plushes over at him. Um, I'm gonna roll an insight real quick. No, no, no. I'm take out my uh, shield and block it as you toss it to me. Well, the spell Don't could do let, that. The spell could end any moment. I better protect you guys. Um. <laughs> With that nature check, you don't know enough about wolves to really gleam off any information about them. These wolves look completely normal. As far as I know about wolves. Yeah, like one... the, uh, Go ahead. I was going to be like, it's not normal wolf, but... Uh... Uh, nothing about them seems very dire. Uh, yeah. Pick up the, oh, uh, no. the, the plush that Vio tossed at Taurus. Uh, I'm going to assume it's the it's thorn, thorn one that was tossed in Yep, you got thorn. Do you think they were turned into these little plushies? The kids. The eh, kids love toys. Yeah, may as well keep uh, keep them in case we find them. One, two, three, four, five. No, I assume there would be two wolves and two... Two adult wolves and two children wolves. And here we have three adult wolves and two plushies. Uh, no, I, I see three adult wolves. Correct. If we had, if their two parents had been turned into wolves, there are only two parents. I, I'm talking about these ones right here, the taxidermy ones. 
Yes, I, I'm saying that if the parents of the place were turned into taxidermied wolves, there would only be two, but there is three, as you were saying. And I'm leaving this room. Yeah. Uh, keep keep coming up with those st uh, stories, Horace. Now, if there was four wolves, they'd... Oh. <laughs> then each of them would be the two wolves that are inside them. <laughs> and now I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> should we stay on the first floor or continue going up I think we just went through all the first floor didn't uh, we no there's a go. there's a door right over there um, <laughs> the who's the last person to leave, leave the room well uh, Jess has walked Jess has stayed back because she's making a sandwich uh, so I'll just say Horace is just currently in the room with her until Jess gets back yeah um, as you watch everyone leave, um, you take a quick glance back. And you notice that the wolves have changed position. The large gray wolf is standing beside a smaller brown wolf, and the first gray wolf is snarling towards them. In act, in like, mo uh, like. Just position or actual snarls? Oh, I don't, I don't tell anybody this. I just look kind of just... I know, I'm asking uh, <laughs> Right, right, no, I mean, I'm just saying that in character, like, nobody else sees that. It's like when the weeping like, angels, like, go after you. It's kind of yeah, like one of those yeah. situations. But they're not, they're like... I'll close the door behind us. Uh, if you want to move Romania out of the room... Saying goodbye to your silly wolves, Sir Horace. Silly, yes. Wolves, yes. Goodbye, yes. <laughs> Good, let's continue, because nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all in like, a time limit here, because like, it said 12 dings, and then it's been 6 dings, so like, we only got like, less than 6 dings. more than enough time to search a paltry mansion. It doesn't seem too big. Does uh, everyone go towards that door? Yeah. I'll go first this time, little guy. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Open nice. door. You enter a... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you enter a tidy kitchen with dishware, cookware, and utensils neatly placed on shelves. <laughs> a work table has a cutting board and a rolling pin atop it. A stone dome-shaped oven stands near the east wall, its bent iron stovepipe connecting to a hole in the ceiling. Behind the stove and to the left is a thin door. In the front right-hand corner of the room stands a small wooden door set into the wall. Cool. Like, it's pretty clean in here. Mostly just the one, like, bloody word wall that's, like, not clean about this place. Mm, just a regular kitchen. Oh, it's a nice kitchen. This guy, Groot's gonna, like, yell at the door, but, like, kind of, like, yelling in that whisper, because we're clearly in someone else's house. <clears throat> There's, like, another door in here. Really? Yeah. As you look through the kitchen, you do find that um, there is a bottle of wine placed on uh, placed on the table. Well, not really my sort of thing all the time, but you know, let's take a look. Um, what does the bottle of wine say? Like, is there a label on it or? There it is. Uh, the wine's label shows that it's from the Wizard of Wines Winery. It provides the name of the wine. Champagne du Lestomp. 
Uh, would I... Um, I'm gonna just say Minerva likes wine. And would... What are the chances Minerva would know this winery? You give me a history check. Um, but next to it, you do see a, uh, also... Um... You see a folded piece of delicate lace in a vial of brownish dried powder and a bouquet of wilted sunflowers tied to a small scroll of parchment. Oh, I'd be interested in reading the parchment. Okay. Oh, with that history check, you with the 19, you've never heard of a place called Wizard of Wines. You're fairly well known in wines, but I haven't heard this one before. Maybe this will be like a little uh, sales thing from it. The parchment of the scroll reads, for the light of my life, and it's initialed G. I wonder if this is Gustav. Oh, that's cute. Although, all these flowers look wilted. I wonder if... Was, was he going to give her wilted flowers, or have they just been here for a while? So give me a... I'll, I'll tell you about the other stuff, too. Give me an intelligence check. Or a, a nature check. Um. <coughs> so, next to the um, the bottom of the world is some lace with the initials K sewn into one corner. And, um, Grood and Minerva, maybe especially Grood, um, you, you identify the brown powder as, a, as dried, uh, Sulfium, I think it's pronounced, it is a, a contraceptive herb. Like they're trying to have kids? Yeah. No, the, the opposite. Yep, okay. Oh! <laughs> I'm trying not to have kids. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 kids. yeah you're right. Yeah. pregnancy. Okay. They're trying to have a baby. It's like, no, it's the opposite. Oh, they're not trying to have a baby. <laughs> you apply it directly to the baby and it stops them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Becomes ex-baby. Does Romania, like, hear that? And she's like, I know that smell. Or, or, or smell like the herb and is like, I know that smell. I'm sorry, yeah. just who? Romania? Romaya. We, Romaya. 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 Get my name right. No. <laughs> Country of Romania is with us. We're saying they found a uh, <laughs> contraceptive herb, like a powder. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're saying Romaya might have. Why would familiar. you know about it? Yeah. You think oh, this woman I... has kids? <laughs> what that, that, that's the that that would that would support my theory. Yes. So, uh, Minerva, you reading the note? Yes, I've already read it. Beginning because of the misreading of contraceptors, she was like, oh, how sweet, oh! Yeah, so when you go, oh, how sweet, and you go, oh, uh, one of the knives from the counter, as you read, um, read for the love of, for the light of my life, one of the knives from the counter just lies into the wall behind you, like, missing you by an inch. Um, we'll, we'll like, jump back and, like, drop the note. I'm like, ah! 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 Oh, that wasn't me. Well, if you drop the note, you also drop the wine. Damn it! Oh, God, I dropped the wine! Ah! Well, it wasn't for me, but also it might have been full of that... I don't what know. What happened? Is everyone okay? But when he... When it, when it, need it, saving? Who's was that? Um, when it drops, though, you notice that uh, it's just, like, vinegar at this point. The sorry the the, the, the wine. Oh, okay. I'm like, oof. It smells terrible. Although probably good in salads. Um. <laughs> so these things have been here for a while. Answers your question about the flowers. I think our hosts may not be around because they haven't been around for a very long time. Where they're around and like all dead and spooky. Do any of the uh, kitchen utensils look like they've and, and and appliances or the equivalent it looks like they have been used recently, as in you know the past hour? Well, that one though, it's in the wall. It was used right now. 
other than that. Oh, uh... I guess Groot's gonna go over to the knife that's stuck into the wall. Um, okay, so... Mark, you were asking if they look... Uh... I'm, yeah, so I'm asking if anything it looks like is used recently as... The dining room is set with a full dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they're very nice. Nice seems sharp, obviously. Um, but they don't look like they've been used recently, no. And as you kind of look them over, even accounting for the knife that's in the wall, you notice that there is a knife missing from the set. Huh. Is it like, uh, like the big, like, cleaver one? Or is it the... <laughs> It's, it's the tiny orange peeler one. Yeah, it's a little, like, apple <laughs> paring knife. It's the one we'll find in someone's back later. Oh, it's the murder knife, yeah. Well, well if this is, like, Clue, as soon as you open the pantry door from the kitchen, she will fall through it with the knife in her back. Let's, let's see if you're right. <laughs> I'm gonna open up this door. And I'm Unless they've got like, um, like if there's like a knife rack or um, spot specifically for each individual one, I'm going to try to open a drawer and just stuff the remaining knives in there to make sure they don't go flying around again. I am opening up this door. Yeah, it seems, seems to be more um, like a pantry. Yeah, like more cooking stuff. Okay. Just, just the pantry, no body falling out. Wow, this this mansion is actually designed like a house. <laughs> what of this small door over here? Oh, open it up. Open it up. That appears to be a dumbwaiter. Is the dumbwaiter is the is the the elevator, whatever word it is for the actual chamber. Uh, or the actual car is the car on our level? Well, car it is not. Stick my head and look up and down. Can I tell if it goes down and or up? It does go down, but it does go up. I'll, uh, does it have like the mechanism, like the pulley system, to pull it? Yeah, up and down. Hanging on the wall next to it, the dumb waiter is a tiny brass bell attached by wires to a button. To the other areas of the house. Yep. Any wolves in there? <laughs> you see three no, wolves. It, it might be, in uh, every dumb it, waiter there are three wolves. Oh, this is like this is like uh, Men in Black too. Oh, there's a little um, locker with the civilization inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I'll lower the dumb waiter so that the car is on our level. Alright. Yes. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And a moment later. A empty dumbwaiter. Yeah. Just as I thought, dust and echoes. I was definitely expecting a severed head or something with the way this place is laid out. Right? That would have been at least interesting. Well, I'm gonna... Oh, I'm... all we do is go up. Well, I'm gonna get out of the room that almost stabbed me. Good idea. And so Minerva walks out of the room. Mm -hmm. Groot so is just laughs, there. giggles to himself in plate armor. When you're I'm when you're back in the, uh, in the this main lobby area, you know it's about twenty minutes have passed. Well, that's a bit odd, don't you think? Do you think that's faster or slower? Like it, it seems about right. But for a place that's so frozen in time, well, I suppose maybe I'm taking it a bit too literally. Well, let's check upstairs, I guess. Would is you wish for me to me? lead the way as oh. I am ready? Yeah, go. You got it. I'm right on your back, All right. buddy. All right. Um, I uh, I grip the um the handle as I go up the stairs and I turn around and I was like, this could be scary haunted house stairs that turn to slide. Hang right. on as you walk up. Right, I'm move that, your that's a thing? Where'd you know about this? I read it in a book. I didn't know you could read. God damn it. I took the joke right out of my mouth. 
I was Gigi, also going you, to say that. Beat me by <laughs> five, five Why would you know that? I've never read to you. You know, no, like, like your father. I don't uh, that. As you, you uh, descend the stairs. Very creaky, Ascent. very old. Ascended, sorry. Well, no, well. Yeah. Maybe it's one of those cases where you descend when you go up. It uh, looks like we're going up, but we're really yeah, going we should down. we should be on this this uh side. As it, it is it's going up clockwise. Yeah. Counterclockwise, sorry, anti clockwise. Oh, you're so pedantic, Mark. Maybe we came in and just situated ourselves here. Anyway, Joey, go yeah, ahead. I throw, I throw Romania off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna put each one of you on the stairs, sorry. Um, it's fair, it's fine. It's unlit fine. oil lamps are mounted on the walls of this elegant hall. Hanging above the mantelpiece is a long sword. With a windmill, with a windmill cameo worked into the hilt, standing suits of armor flank wooden doors in the east and west walls. Each suit of armor clutches a spear, and has a, it has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. The doors between them are carved with images of dancing youths. <coughs> the red marble staircase continues its upward spiral to a third floor. A cold draft draft whispering down from above well if the dumb waiter was to <coughs> be in the indication if it stopped on this level it'd be in this room over here point to my right which i think is north <laughs> i think north is to the right on this map <laughs> so for the sake of my sanity just assume <laughs> that up is north despite up what this north. compass says <laughs> Mag magnetic north. Yes. Uh, do any of us have keen mind? So none of us know where north is. Did I take keen mind? You were really confused. It's like, what do you mean right? Right, right to the stairs. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I mean, for those listening, uh, this yeah. this map has... I mean, it's not weird because obviously north can be any direction in a map. But um, yeah, north is yeah. to the, uh, the left. Um, to traditional west. Yeah, so I, I guess they took the... the, the um, the side of the road it's on and the direction of the street into account. Yeah. They they probably made the map first and then like the town map and then made this building and you're like, which which building would this be? Probably this one, and then mm -hmm. we're forced to do that. Uh yeah. I'm noticing fine. a um They seem to really like wolves. I mean, who doesn't? She just kind of eyes them up and down. I asked you, who doesn't? <laughs> Lots of people. They're vicious, I don't you know. I don't particularly like wolves. They mess up my equipment. Drool and all that stuff, you know. The best thing to do with wolves is to throw them a piece of meat. So when you open up, uh, do you open up that door for any of you, Horus? You know what? I will. I will. I will. I Vio and Romea, and I will open the door and look in. Okay. Uh, you... This undecorated bedroom contains a pair of beds with straw with a straw straw stuffed mattress. At the foot of each bed is a closed footlocker. A door to the left appears to lead to a closet. In the right-hand corner stands a small wooden door, a metal button set into the wall beside with a set into the wall beside it. A basket full of unwashed laundry appears to have been left beside it. I will open the dumbwaiter door. And then I'll peer out. Yep, dumbwaiter, right here. I was right. Yeah, you see the dumbwaiter uh, tunneling downward and upwards. These, is this probably like the kids' room? Or this you know, kind of maybe seems a little yeah, fancy are, enough for kids. These beds are six feet long, give or take. This has got to be for full-grown adults. Possibly Goliaths. Short Goliaths, but Goliaths nonetheless. <laughs> All right, oh, look yeah. at the... Uh, look at any of these foot lockers trunks or whatever they are mm -hmm. they are actually on the map if anything is in them St 
just seems to contain a few personal effects. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, do notice the um, the basket full of laundry, though. It contains man's laundry, including a fine suit, tunics, neckties, pants, and stockings. However, a single, much smaller woman's slip appears to have been mixed in with the rest. Scandalous. Could this be yours, Ramaya? You said you were. You may have had a client here. Not at all what I said. I, I believe it says he looks like a client you had once. Yeah, looks. I believe like you did say a that. Client. Doesn't mean I can. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Please, I wouldn't wear something so gaudy. That is fair enough. Bold of you to assume I also wear a slip. <laughs> Maybe it slipped off of you? Commando! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I love Gru <laughs> so much! <laughs> <laughs> Another free spirit, I see. <laughs> Me too, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> Until everything goes horrible, then yeah. we'll have a good time. I imagine like he's wearing a kilt too, you know, just to feel the breeze, yeah. man. Uh, be one with nature. I'll, uh, <clears throat> go over to the what appears to be a closet and open it up to see if it appears to be oh, a oh. closet. I forgot Dee's was here when he went to the um the dining room full of food. He should have tried to be eating it. <laughs> I think that's one thing Groot would have been like, hey, don't, bro, if you do it, you're dead. I swear, I've seen it so many times, don't even do it. He goes, mm. Yeah, mm. kind of like thing, it's like. <laughs> and then maybe out of like his like robe pocket, there's like another, like some sticky, like it's all has lint on it, but it's like nuts from the place. Well, same yeah. with that voice actor, um, uh, Bradley D. Baker, who does all the animal voices. Think we can get him to voice D's? <laughs> <laughs> Their cameo or something? No, maybe? no, like full a full cast member. He's just here to voice the squirrel. <laughs> Has Probably. Bradley D. Baker taken over Frank Welker as the animal guy? Or are you thinking Frank Welker? I think I'm thinking both. Optimus Prime is the uh the animal guy? Optimus Prime is Nibbler. Yes. Oh, cool. And Dr. Claw. Uh nope. Yeah, let's add him in on post. He's not Nibbler. <laughs> Yeah, Frank Welker, Frank Welker's Nibbler. That's not Optimus uh... Prime. That's 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 Megatron. Oh. Probably D. Baker voices like um, Appa and Naga on uh, Avatar. But I th but, I, but but you're right. Um, the the Megatron guy does voice a lot of uh animals too. Unless I'm completely misremembering my voice actors. Sorry if they're listening. Frank Welker or um, uh. Bradley D. Baker, please tell us in the comments below <laughs> which one you are, who you, are, who you voice, and because if you'd like to voice you follow this. <laughs> if you would like to be a druid in our game, uh, feel free. No, no, just a squirrel. Yeah, bro, <laughs> I'm, I'm still here. And we're gonna go with South Park rules where they get they get um, George Clooney to play a turkey. Yeah, but this and a dog. Oh, the dog. He did the dog. Yeah, <laughs> um, but this appears to be a uh, servant's quarters. Okay. There's like two doors on either side. What do you need two doors for? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I'm opening this one. Okay. okay I'm going to use how this is laid out now. Oh, these are double doors, right? Yeah, you can open yeah. up both, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, double doors. Um. You open the doors to reveal a library. Red velvet drapes cover the windows of this room. An exquisite mahogany desk and a matching high back chair face the entrance in the, in the fireplace, above which hangs a framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Um, situated in the corners of the room are two overstuffed chairs. Floor-to-ceiling bookshelves line the south wall. A rolling wooden ladder allows one or more easily reach to one allows one to more easily reach the high shelves. Minerva, you're in your element. A library. Found a bunch of books. Books. Uh, maybe I can make some sense out of what's happening. Uh, Minerva's just gonna look over at the shelves, quickly walk by and glance 
Um, does anything stand out? I'd, I'd say that she's be looking for something about the Durst family tree or like the occult. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna rummage the desk. Okay, move it over first. Uh, to do. Sorry, I'm just reading through things here. So Minerva, uh, you take a quick quick glance at the uh, at the library book at, at the um, books on the shelf um, to see what looks interested. But one catches your eye. Um, the first one catches your eye is a uh, kind of a, a collection of of rocks, just like a, like proudly on display. And they're, and they're labeled with their with their scientific name. Um, that catches your eye, but a book right next to it says "The Tale of Minerva." Oh, well, all right, I'm gonna weird. Um, open up the book. All right. You look at the first page, and it says Minerva was born. To, and then it says, like, name your mother and father. Uh, and then, quickly. And then you start, like, reading more. And it's like you realize you're reading a, a story about you. This is a history of your life. And quickly close it and, like, look away. <laughs> look at the party. Don't say anything. Think about it for a bit. And then, like, jump to the last page. Right. The last page says, Minerva pulled the book down from the shelf and began to read. Unaware of the creature that watched them from the shadows, slowly the beast began to creep forward, and then it's just a blood splatter on the page. Huh. Um, we'll uh, close the book and turn around really quickly. Um, it's there! You just see Vio, like, admiring the desk. Huh? What is? There's, there's a beast! A beast is lurking for trying to get us in the shadows. I glance around. No beast? No beast? Um, no shadows? No, it's, it's no, nothing particularly hidden. Um, There's something wrong, Lady Minerva. Well, it's, um, well, uh, looking back at the book, does it still say the tale of Minerva on it? Uh, yes. Um, slowly gonna put the book up and show it to them. This book is about me. I didn't write it. Nobody knows about me yet. Um, Surely somebody must know about you? Not enough to write a book about me, at least not without giving me royalties. Uh, fair enough. May I see it? Uh, she hands it off to Sir Horse. I open up the first couple of pages. Is there an author, like an author bio? Like other books by author type thing. <laughs> I know, but as you look at the book, instead of her life, it displays yours. Huh. This is not the life of Minerva. It's the the uh, magical adventures of Sir Horace. Don't be ridiculous. And then, so she's gonna. Flip to the front page again. No, I will. I will. I will take. I'm not letting anybody read about me. I will snap it away from her. Sorry, I'm back. What did I miss? Uh, we're we're reading books about ourselves. Oh, Minerva's gonna be away. like, Miss Just Minerva. give it back. It doesn't even have your name on it. Can she see my name on it? Does it has it changed to that, or is it only like, do I see my name and she says she's her name? Who's ever looking at the book, you see your own name. Well, are you sure? Because it looks thing? to me like it says Romaya. I don't think you're... Oh, that's here. how it's spelled. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was saying Ramona. <laughs> well, I wouldn't even see it because it says Groot on mine. <laughs> yeah. Who well, my name? Oh, sick. Where'd you find that? I but, didn't know there's another guy. But whoever, whoever opens it, the, the last book always has the creature stalking from the shadows and then a bloodstain. 
I'll pass it off to whoever wants to take a look at it next. We're going to be anti-clockwise yeah. order. It'll be Romeo. But Vo, you're looking at the desk. Yeah. Right. There is a. Um, a handwritten note sits atop the desk. Uh, Hold on, let me make sure I pulled out the right one. Um, okay. Oh, I don't think I made a handout of this. Hold on one real quick. Continue to argue about the, the book. <laughs> It's no, my book. I grab it first. No, I okay, but it does it have anything about me in it? I didn't see it. I just read the first couple pages in the last terrifying page where we all die. Well, skip to what the middle. It? See if anything interesting happened in the middle of your life. Reads it, um, and it's just like, oh right, that time I caused an explosion. Well. Oh. That's, uh, that must be an exciting chapter. Actually, Actually no, it's no. repetitive. Wasn't Explosion that one. Last <laughs> <Next week. laughs> okay, here we go. Sorry, I must miss this one when I was preparing. Right, view, Sorry. the note reads, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Durst, In light of my current condition, I respectfully ask you to leave... I respectfully ask for your leave for a brief time away from my responsibilities. Um, while my devotion to your dear children makes this decision difficult, I have taken it upon myself to find a solution that I hope will serve your household well. A good acquaintance of mine is experienced in the care of children, and I believe that she could assume my role during my temporary leave without difficulty. I realize that my request is not without its complications. However, my years serving your family have shown me the depth of your, of your understanding and compassion. I truly feel that I have become a part of this family and look forward to bringing another member of that family into this world. Yours sincerely, Clara. Huh. I'm assuming Vio read that out loud. Uh, no. Okay, never mind. Well, I want everyone uh, to know, so. But yeah, he'll, 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 uh, letter about, uh, their governess, um, uh, uh, leaving and knowing somebody to replace them. I know. Doesn't sound, uh, too important. Uh, we'll do another quick rummage to see if there's anything else, um, on or in the, uh, the, uh, the, thing. Hermione will take a look at the letter and, like, just read through it. Yeah. And it leaves it on the table to take. Um, it sounds a bit more than just somebody going on a leave, if you ask me. What's so everyone's so passive? I found some bonbons while I was downstairs. <laughs> Went to the kitchen. <laughs> oh, um, they're pop- they're fried bonbons. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Thirteen. What's so everyone's passive perception? 13. Uh, 9. 14. Things see me. That's how bad it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what about 13. what? What about Minerva? Oh, passive perception is 14. 14. Uh, the people had a 14. Um, well, Minerva, I'll say as you're looking through the books some more. Um, you notice that uh, there seems to be light coming through one of the cracks, like candlelight, like like flickering candlelight. In the in the walls or in the bookshelves? In the bookshelf, like one of the one of the creases. I'm gonna go over. Um, excuse me, everyone, but there seems to be a little bit of a light here. Uh, I just want you to know, so I don't accidentally spring a trap or something. 
right, so um, I'm gonna go. So can I like move something to try and like make it bigger, or is it just something I can peer through? Um, you've been enough around. Sorry, kind of this way said, but you know, like um, been around enough bookshelves that this is probably a secret, um, secret entrance disguised as a bookshelf. Uh, is it open enough for her to peek through? Uh, not, not really. No. I'm going to try and see if it's um, like it's just on hinges and I can move it. Uh, just with physically trying to open it almost like a door. And if not, I am going to uh, start going through the books and seeing if pulling one down causes it to unlock. Yeah, he's like, I've read about this. And books, and you start uh, grabbing at books for a secret, see if one of them is secretly a lever. Um, Eventually there is a, a dark red one. When you pull at it, you hear like a, a cranking sound. The bookshelf kind of opens up like a door. Yes. Op- opens forward. All right, everybody. We've got a little bit of a secret passage through here. Hopefully nothing too dangerous, but probably will be. Um, I think I'm personally, and then she's going to pull out her uh, crossbow, mm-hmm. put a bolt in and say, I'm going to be a little bit more ready going to this room. Um, but as you open, you're expecting, like, a room to be on the other side. Um, but instead you see a small panel made of dark wood behind the bookshelf, built into the wall at approximately chest level. A small hollow niche, jagged and irregular, lies at the panel's center and and emanates a faint ember glow. Faint amber glow. Never mind, it's not a doorway, it's got a little hidden space. So it's almost like a something that's obviously, obviously meant to be placed there, but it's, it's glowing in an amber color. Well, maybe maybe this is a further key that'll help us go in further, but now we know about it, so um, if you ever see something possibly that's also an amber color, things might be color-coded. You never know. Did you like, touch it? Did you? Like... I, I really don't want to touch it, Groot. I'm sorry. I don't want to lose these hands, or else then I can't tinker anymore. Now, what would be so dangerous in the library? It's a hidden door, yes, but it's probably just a room to where all their smut is. Sounds like you know from experience, Sir Horace, but maybe they're not as deprived as you. (laughs) I have experienced many rooms of libraries and many doors where there were secrets. Have you ever gotten a paper cut? Yes. Don't ask me where. Turns back around. It was in a library. Um, you get so, it? You get it, Jess? Do you get it? Yeah, I got it. I think yeah, Mark, yeah. I got it. <laughs> but I do think that's oh. some good information. Uh, any Anything else in here, Vio? Anything in the desk? Is there? Do you look through the desk? Uh, yes. Alright, you see a number of receipts for candles, daggers, and incense. That's it? Uh, as well as <laughs> to do several blank sheets of par- parchment. A wooden seal bearing the Durst family insignia of a windmill. And that's about it. Uh Vio you know, just rummages through the through the drawers, uh, paper rustling noises and uh nothing. a uh, bunch of receipts, paper and this thing and uh holds up the um uh, the uh, wooden signet. 
Um, and also, Minerva, I'll say, as you're looking through the books, um, you're looking for, like, history of the house. Like, whenever you find something interesting besides the book that you're able to pick up, um, they all just, they're so old, they basically, like, rot away as you take them out. So you're not able to glean anything useful. Okay. Um, Sir Horace, while they're looking around, I'm going to just try and, like, bust open the door. There is no door. That was the bookshelf. Yeah. It was the bookshelf, but it was, I thought you said it was on, because there's a door with a lock on it. Uh, it, it opened up to basically a little hatchway. It's basically a wall a with a little door. panel. I see. Uh, yeah. So, does it look like it's. I'll knock on it. Does it feel hollow? Um, or sound hollow? You're saying, is there something on the other side? The answer would be yeah. yes. Um, yeah. Well, then I will try and bust that down, as I assume it's an entryway of some sort. Panel may have dark wood behind it. Give me a quick strength check, but you don't think you can knock the, the wall down. Strength or athletics? Oh, yeah. Athletics. Those are the same, actually, so it doesn't matter, so. 12. Ouch. It hurts. A bunch of books fall off the shelves. As your body makes contact with that little amber groove, like, it's almost like you're hit with a little shock. You know, like you, you, like, like you uh, touched a battery. I just hear the thunk from the other side of the shelf. Having trouble with, uh, with a book... No, I think it's an open and shut door. No way to open it. Might as well keep moving. Okay. All right. I just noticed that Minerva's token accidentally has an alpha layer to it. So the very bottom <laughs> left hand part of it is transparent. <laughs> Oops. Slowing down all our computers, Joseph. Yep. I don't want to see that. It's going to bug me. <laughs> you got to fix it. Yeah. Oh. So do we keep going upstairs? I think it's yeah. like south doors. Like, yeah. As like the crew just like opens it up. See a door I open. It's what I do. <laughs> like nothing bad's happened so far. Why would, why would you say that before entering a new room? Why would you say that? As you enter the room of bad things. <laughs> oh, here it is. Room 101. <laughs> um, Literature joke! You enter a, el a an elegantly appointed hall. Let me, well, let me show you the right room. Yep. Um, you enter a into an elegantly appointed hall, the windows of which are covered by gossamer drapes. A brass plated chandelier hangs from the ceiling and upholstered chairs line the walls. Several stained glass wall hangings depict beautiful men, women, and children's, children singing and playing instruments. A harpsichord with a bench rests on the northwest corner. Near the fireplace is a large standing harp. Alabaster figures of well-dressed dancers adorn the mantelpiece. This is like a it's like a dance place. There's like piano and everything in here. It is a conservatory. It's a conservatory. Yep. Minerva will follow in. Uh, I don't know if she knows the difference between a piano and a harpsichord, to be honest. Oh. If you do. Hmm. Around. I think she might be interested in how it's made, so I think she's going to just, like, hang out around it for a bit. Okay. Um, and then I think, you know, like, when you, you walk in and there's, like, a public piano or whatever, and you just kind of, like, hit one key yeah. or whatever? I think she'll as do soon that. As I see her doing that, I'm going to dive out the door and, like, roll and just, like, prepare myself thinking that the like the door is gonna lock and then this like spike's gonna come out of the ceiling and the piano's gonna come to life and chomp chomp yeah. chomp chomp <laughs> um well harpsichord doesn't come to life um but as you um 
examine it, Minerva, you notice that one of the uh, the keys is held down in the in the down position. It seems to be stuck. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, jump the crossbow there. Uh, yes. Um, does anybody play instruments? Does, do you know if this key is anything in particular? I don't know. I'll come over and investigate. Sure. Uh, I am not proficient in uh, piano. But it's a um, stringed instrument. That's true. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah. It doesn't seem to... It just seems to be random for all intents and purposes. Like which, like the key that's that's stuck. Um, it's gonna get on Minerves, so uh, Minerva is gonna use her tinkerer tools to just kind of like try and pull it yeah. back up. <laughs> kind of like mess with it. You realize so something seems to be stuck inside it. Like that's why it's stuck down. So you open up the back of this harpsichord, and you notice that there is a uh, piece of sheet music kind of stuck within the. The pieces. I'm gonna pull it out carefully so I don't just rip it. Mm -hmm. And if I successfully remove it, I'm gonna hand it over to Vio. It is a parchment with a with hand like handwritten piece of music, and um, it is titled "A Waltz for Clara." Uh, I'm starting to think that this governess was a bit more than just a governess. Well, this could always be uh, one of the owners of the house uh, may be a musician of, of sorts. Seems a simple piece. Do you think you could play it? Now I'm curious. I'm not too familiar with the piano itself. Um, I could try on my violin. But uh, yeah, you can. That is a harp chord Vio. They're the piano. same family. Yeah, you think you? Um, I don't know how much music differs between instruments, but you can definitely like play it on your violin. So like, you're like learn it enough. Yeah. It's all, all treble. treble. <laughs> it's all about that bass. No treble. Hmm. No treble. Right, you um, take a moment to study, and you begin to play the notes. It's a haunting melody that fills this quiet, dusty room. And as you do, the piano begins to play the notes along with you. The the harpsichord begins to play the notes along with you. Um, Minerva steps away from the harpsichord. <laughs> and from the edges of the room, spectral figures begin to materialize, spinning and weaving in a ghostly dance as though led by the song. Most are unfamiliar to you, but you recognize too. Elizabeth Durst in the corner, watching Gustav, watching Gustav's apparition, dancing with a beautiful young woman wearing a humble wearing humble clothes. The eyes of Elizabeth, Elizabeth's apparition, narrow into a cold, furious stare. The dancers pay her little heed, however, the song growing faster as the spirits whirl to the rhythm of the harpsichord's crescendo. With a swift movement, Elizabeth reaches for a pendant around her spectral neck, a shimmering amber shard hung on a cord of ethereal mist. As her ghostly fist curls around it, her eyes flash a bright, menacing amber, and the spectral dancers dissipate, swept away as if by unseen wind. Elizabeth's apparition lingers but a moment longer before disappearing with the rest. As it does, a sound resonates through the room, the low sound of scraping wood originating from the room across the hall. The floor trembles... The floor trembles faintly as you hear a crash from the mantelpiece. Two of the alabaster figurines have fallen from their place on the shelf. One toppled over to its side. Another shattered across the floor. I hope we are not blamed for that. I don't think it was us. Who's going to look at Rumaya and be like, 
Do you think what's happening? I think I know what's happening. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. I think Why I might mess you- up a little bit. I think the this is supposed to open the secret door, so um, I think either one's fine, though. Yeah. Okay. But, but that's what the you- that's what the sound was was the door opening. Oh, okay. So it's like um. Like, why would you like title it that? Why wouldn't you just like change the title? Well, I also don't know why you'd actively dance with your mistress and sprint right in front of your wife, but. Like, that's what I'm thinking too! Mm. Maybe we've been summoned by the vengeful spirit of a woman caught in a tryst. Like, don't do that to. Just like divorce, right? Like, don't. I don't know. I don't know relationship stuff, but I stay out of it a bit, so, uh. Oh, I don't either. I pre- I just paid to I get paid to pretend to know I do, but I suppose I can understand how that poor woman is feeling. But I agree. What an idiot move naming the song after your lover. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, do not read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's for it's for Waltz of Sarah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the name's uh, scribbled out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we, uh, I guess now we know what's going on here. I'm, uh... What? Wait, Minerva, didn't you find something down in the kitchen? No, I found something in the library. No, 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 the, the herb. The... Oh. Oh, yes. And here, in this letter, it says something about um, bringing another... Looking forward to bringing another member of that family into this world. Well, I think it's quite obvious what was happening here. Yeah. Too bad. It's not, it's not an easy decision to make, and it, I don't know if she was really the one making the decision. I don't think it was a decision she made, no. Though it still doesn't explain why we're here now, does it? No, that old farmer man, really, to his farmhouse, we're not in a farm ha- house. There's no farm man. There's not even anything remotely farm-like about any of the decor. Did you What's think maybe it? it was like an illusion? Like he protected his home with illusion magic? What What if it's one of those, like, ghosts that doesn't know they're dead and they're stuck in the cycle of the last things they did, and they just need people to... to, to to get revenge on thinking that it's their husband. And that's I mean, that is entirely possible. It's not too far off the mark. I mean, anything's possible with some of these specters. So yeah, I true. I think that... Um, I think I heard the door... that Something happened in the library. And I noticed that the thing she clutched to her chest was the same color. And You know, I was talking about color-coded things earlier. I just really want to go back and check. But would somebody be willing to come with me? Because I'm not exactly the best in a close I combat will. situation. Thank you, I am sir. Carl. Equipped for that. I will follow a few feet behind. I must say, I am terribly intrigued by this. Uh, tea, this hot unfortunately, glass. it just seemed to be the sound of the uh, the uh, secret door kind of reopening by itself, and you see the oh. same the same wooden paneling with the little amber hole. Well, now we know for sure. We need to find that necklace, don't we? Yeah, but but you know for sure now that it's um definitely matches the same color. Like imagine like like these pale specters that were dancing around the room, but the amber shard was this like beautiful golden color. You know, it probably just, like... felt a lot more sus- uh, substantial than the other ones too. Mm. So so does jewelry have? Do they become ghosts when they die? Is there like a bunch of ghost diamonds around? I don't. Do they have a mosquito in the middle? Understand. Like, you assume that they did die. Well, what else? I mean, this could just be an image recording, but why would they record that and keep it? What if the husband just watched it afterwards and was just like, like, you know, intrigued by what he what he was doing to you know, his he, wife? He watched it for his own, you know, you know. That's what I was trying to say without saying it, Joey. Yeah. Trying to keep this yes. PG, Joey. Yes, Sir Horace, I understand. <laughs> you know, you come he up with the play- song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good song. Good. It's got quite the beat. 
really drive. There's <laughs> rhythm to dance to it. <laughs> One could even waltz to this song. Waltz for Clara. Um, yes, all just, right. Uh, sorry? No, I was just, I was pondering what, why someone would keep this record of visual. Well, I mean, if you're assuming it's through his eyes, but it seems like to me it's through somebody else. Somebody with a very powerful piece of pendant. Um, True. I'm probably going to want to continue upstairs because um, I think we're running out of time and we need to get out of here. Probably we'll, 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 we'll we'll go over to the window. Ready. Probably ahead. about a, about an hour has passed since you arrived at the house. So it starts bonging seven. Yeah. More dings. And I will I will check the uh, the windows for the horrible moist vines. We're still here. Close the door. Yeah. <laughs> Not get out that way. Feed me. <laughs> See more. All right. Um, you guys want to take a little break or? No, I want to keep going forever. No, we can take a break. Bathroom break. Yep. Oh, bathroom break. Hey. It's almost my birthday. Anyway, let's go to Christmas. It is almost Rock. your birthday. Oh, fuck. I don't know what's Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get I'm, you a Christmas present. I'm DMing a game for you. That's my present. <laughs> don't do anything. Yeah. I'm running a campaign. No, it's okay. I'll, that's, my, that's, my birth, I'll, that's my birthday present. I'll get you another games workshop card, gift card with no name on it. Yes. Yeah, so oh, Phil must have gotten me this. He likes <laughs> <my> hammer. <laughs> 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 right. Anyway, Ugh. inside jokes aside. <laughs> All right, you seem to explore every visible room on this floor. Is everyone back? Yeah, we're it's all here. Seconds, okay, so okay, so okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, shall we go up then? Would you like to lead the way? Why are go you on. afraid, Sir Horus? If I said yes, would that make you go up first? No. Hmm. Then I guess we're at a standstill. I shall lead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll just go up if you need it. Like, <laughs> no, rude, I'm rude. I, I be, I my jovialness is quite um. Too late. Okay. okay. But, oh no, I got what you're doing, Bon. <laughs> but I will protect the lot, the the four of you. Okay, so I'm going to just put you all in a group, move you up, up yeah. there. Um, I, walk up, I walk up the stairs backwards because I'm facing only one way. Loading. Whoa. Although I like about these ones is that we are all facing the same way for once, even though some people are looking forward and others are looking back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because they all need to, one of the little talking avatars, they all need to be looking in the same direction. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> uh, hold on, let's see what this room hey, is. Your eyes are upside down. Hey. How's it going? Welcome to, get this, the third floor. Whoa, my favorite <laughs> well, club. <laughs> uh, you climb the red marble staircase to its full height, arriving at a dusty balcony. The air, here is, the air here is dry and musty, but tinged with a strange coppery, coppery scent. A suit of black plate armor stands aside one wall, draped in cobwebs and marked by age. Oil lamps are mounted on the faded oak paneled walls, which are carved with woodland scenes of trees, falling leaves, and tiny beasts. Well, you were going to protect us, weren't you? Well, then everybody ran in front of me and went on on, on the thing. Of, okay. <laughs> yes, no ghoulies up here. No monsters, nor spiders, nor... Uh, well, now that you've said it out loud, Sir Horace, I believe we are thoroughly jinxed. Yeah. I should, Not I suppose that I believe I in that type of stuff. I suppose I slithered into that one myself. I apologize. Oh, and now they're snakes. Thank you. I, do we do in character, Mark? Do we know that he he he's a Wanti, right? Oh no, he's a centaur. 
Oh. No. Um, um, yeah, he yeah. it wouldn't keep it like he passes very very much as human, but like if you know what a Yanti looks like or like okay. the subtleties of it, it would, would he would not be hiding it. Okay, his what tattoos actually know, have basically. yeah, his tattoos have snakes <clears throat> on them. So if you've if you've slept with maybe seventeen Yanti, you'd probably know. Oh, Romaya would be well versed in Yanti. I can yes, tell you that. Right right. So she she'll she'll look at. I'm going to bite my tongue and not make further jokes. I think that was a. Um... I think that was a, a pun. Slither his way. You understand. You, sh you shouldn't bite your tongue, though. It's already parsed. I don't know if my slithering sounds are uh, coming through on the mic. Um, shall we continue? Was absolutely <laughs> not. not. <laughs> don't do it. It's just so awkwardly quiet. I like, I'm, I'm like, oh, right. I have noise. I have noise for... <laughs> For noise uh, for, I, was, uh, I was mostly worried nobody knew what the word meant. <laughs> no, no, because it's the split. T yeah. I just imagine Sir Horace was actually trying to, like, but, like, he can't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and open up these doors, if I may. Okay. I believe that's a rug. <laughs> rug Sasha. Ufasa. <laughs> Uh, Excuse me. Do. Um. Okay, as you approach the door, these grand doors loom tall. They're dark wood frames in enclosing a dust, a pair of dusty stained glass windows. Each pane is etched with the intricate designs that resemble windmills. The once vibrant hues now faded and obscured behind a thick veil of grime. Through the dusty haze that prickles your eyes, you catch a glimpse of something through the door. A, si a, a silhouette standing mere inches behind the glass, lit from behind by a dim amber glow. It's still and unmoving, but the mere sight of it seizes your muscles in a vice-like grip, your limbs refusing to obey your conscious mind. The air around you thickens, its temperature plummeting to a bone-chilling cold. Your breath fogs the glass panes, a delicate frost creeping across them as the house's distant creaks and whispers are swallowed by a heavy silence. The shadows behind the door is nearly formless, insubstantial, but its presence invokes a primal dread deep within your marrow. Your heart beats faster. Sweat beating on your forehead, pulse racing through your your veins. Slowly, the silhouette begins to turn his head towards yours. And then as suddenly as it appeared, the shadow evaporates. The biting cold ebbs away, and the house quiet sounds return once more. That was uncomfortable. It's disconcerting, yes. Nothing I cannot handle. I will slowly tiptoe into the room. Right. I think it's gone. You enter a dusty, cobweb-filled master bedroom with burgundy drapes covering the windows. A four-poster bed with in embroidered curtains and tattered gossamer veils stands against the center wall. A door facing the foot of the bed has a full length mirror mounted on it. In the right hand corner of the room stands a small wooden door, its surface half rotted by age. A tarnished metal button is set to the wall beside it. A rotting tiger skin rug lies on the floor in front of the fireplace, which has a dust covered portrait of a man and woman from the first floor portrait hanging above it. A web filled parlor to the southwest corner consists of two chairs and a table holding several items. As well as a dark, as well as a dark, sorry, as well as a door with a dark, dirt, flecked window. The room also contains a matching pair of wardrobes, a padded chair, and a vanity with a, with a wood framed mirror and a, and a silvered jewel, silver jewelry box. A soft amber glow emanates from beneath the jewelry jewelry box's lid. I believe we were looking for Amber, were we not? Um, Minerva is going to poke her head in. Oh! Yes, that, 
that's the color right there. Um, but now I'm terrified because there was um, that visage. Am, uh, it did not harm us, uh, likely because I was protecting everyone. You have nothing to fear. So you would be completely fine to go over there and open up that jewelry box. If you wish me to do so, I will. A double dog jury. Nah, bro yes. won't do it. Bro won't do it. <laughs> Just hearing us bicker and you're like, what, you mean this box? Open it up. <laughs> um, Dude, stop doing that. <laughs> as you approach Fire the desk all. as you approach the desk, you do take a good look at you get like a good look at the bed. And uh, you notice that a large bloodstained kitchen knife has been driven into one of the pillows. Um, Sir Horace, did you happen to notice this? I, uh, I did not. Is the bed alive? Well, was it alive and now dead? Um, may maybe, but also maybe it's just more blood from... I don't know how somebody died. I, well, I mean, perhaps, but it, that makes less sense because they would have just left the knife and whoever they stabbed, not stab them, take it out, and then stab it into the pillow. I'm not sure that's how ghostly visages work. I will possible. say I'm very new to this, but, you know, I've heard stories. I've ghost stories, you know, there are books of those. I've read them. Um, this all seems to be sort of like half memories of things that have happened. And so I believe, unfortunately, somebody may have been stabbed in, apparently, the face or head. Oh, really they're hard getting through that bone. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, how did they... Um, oh, maybe I know what they did. I, they stabbed with the sharp end facing up, and they just pulled it off from the bottom so it would just slip on out without them having to take the knife out. Or if they stabbed them through the mouth or eye, like I'm about to do with somebody right now, are, are you, is the, is, are, is the visage taking you over? No, I'm just very frustrated for reasons that are probably unrelated. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. uh, I, uh, is, is everyone else here completely prepared for absolute hell breaking loose if perhaps we would open this jewelry box? I am always prepared for hell breaking loose. <clears throat> Yeah, like, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that. Sure, go for it, said from the hallway. Let me just, um, take a few <laughs> steps back. Maya. <laughs> so, uh, Maya's back. just like, let me freshen up first. <laughs> I, Hell breaking I, loose, I, you say. Well. <laughs> I, I throw the jewelry box over here and it breaks open now. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will pick up the jewelry box and I will open it. Alright. Will you also take a potato chip and eat it? Is it the disgusting brown one at the bottom of the bag? <laughs> Just the way you said that was the same as fucking death note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you open up the jewelry box. Um, and it's empty of valuables, but instead is filled with grain. But you do see a amber shard resting in the center of the box. And a roll of parchment half buried in the grain oh, as well. Rem remove... Both of them, starting with the the amber shard. Okay. Minerva, I believe this is yours. Oh, you can keep holding on to that. Don't worry. Very well. I will try and fiddle open the parchment with one hand as I'm holding the other shard in my other, and I got a shield on. Okay. I will uh, read the uh, uh, parchment. Right, it reads. Yeah, it says... May I read it out as sure. I'm reading it? Yeah. Drasha, I have selected you as the beast's custodian in my absence. Should the beast grow unruly or show signs of agitation while I am away, I have left this amber shard to weaken it and soothe its fury. Should the need arise, present the shard and speak the beast's name to quiet its tantrums. But be sure to be gone from the house before it awakens at midnight. So long as the beast draws breath, it's not you is the heart of this house, and no meal shall ever sate its appetite. Should you linger in its domain, it will mean doom for you all. Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth, oh. I think, is a bad person. But who well, is she's. I mean, can you really blame her? Yes, but not for her reactions. Those are completely understandable. She's still a bad person. Doesn't make her blameless. Doesn't make her unculpable. Especially if she has a monster in the house that feeds on us. Anyway, who's Drasha? That's what I'd also like to know. That's the first we're hearing of that name, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is anybody ever curious what type of monster it is? I mean, there's different types. There's different, just like people. They have different weaknesses, different strengths. And I'm wondering how this amber shard comes into all of it. It seems to soothe it. I'd also like to quite know what the beast's name is in case we're here until oh, midnight. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Will he give us money? <laughs> this is his house. Actually, come to think of it, have we heard the clock chime at all again since um, the third right before morning? break it struck seven? Okay. So we have five we have time, five hours. Thank you. <laughs> math, math isn't my strong suit, darling. We <laughs> we have five hours to figure this out. You guys spent um, a lot of time exploring the library, so that kind of. Surely we can time. find a, bit. a way out or a name. But like, okay, didn't the blood words say that there was something that satiates it? But then this letter saying like there is nothing that satiates it. But the amber apparently soothes it. And there was an amber shard missing in the library, was there not? Here's the, uh, the to, letter in the lobby. Toward his secret room, a gift to soothe his savage mood, but mind the servants of his brood. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah, got it. Run over, make, make sure to write down in our journal. <laughs> <laughs> My dream journal. Yeah, bloody, bloody. Oh, yeah, Gru does a dream journal. Um. <laughs> hey. Hey, Minerva, we both like writing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a dream journal once, but it turns out I just dreamt it up. Womp womp. Um, well, I believe that this might go into the library. Um, not to rush into things, but we might need to because we're on a time limit. Fair enough. Do you want to come? Should we finish checking this floor? Uh, Ro yeah. Rom Romaine Lettuce, uh, is that door behind you a uh, way out? Uh, let me. Oops, I clicked it. Let me. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> let me. Uh, sorry. Let me. Let me, let me go see. Let it me, is a uh, balcony that leads outside. Looks like um, it's a balcony that leads outside. <laughs> but it's those vines of flesh, flesh, flesh tendrils. But all I can hear is this weird fleshy. No, we're still here. We'll see. It's very bizarre. I don't quite yeah. know. And now that you can like get a better view outside, like this thing is, is like just encasing the edge of the house, like a big dome. It's quite. It's something out there, anyway. Maybe we'll have to to get out, go underneath the root, and dig dig through the bottom. We can do that in four hours, can we not? Other than that, we slay the beast before it can slay. Vo. Sorry, what? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, sure. It's okay. Nothing. I think Sir Horace was just trying to get your attention. <laughs> Less oh, the beast is in here, huh? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a skill. Oh, that is a um. I know this isn't the normal game. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find things labeled a little weird. I'm trying to figure out exactly what it yeah. is. Um, 12A. Oh, B. Sorry. Full of bees? It's yes, full of bees. Oh, it's, it's, not bees. it's just a closet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the big monster inside now. No. The skeleton popped out. 
this another door down here, Joey? Uh, that is the dumbwaiter. Uh, can I open it? Sure, yeah. Fuck it, you can certainly try. You can see it leads all the way down to the first floor. Is there like a thing I can pull? Yeah, there's like a little button I can... I'm gonna hit the button. Little bell, yep. Your little... Imagine like... The little bell rings, you know, and like the, the, the servants down below know to, uh, to bring it up. But since there's no one down there, nothing happens. Hmm. It must be terribly... Uh, convenient to have one of these. If only if somebody is there to access the uh, kitchens. Is it big enough to like, not for like a fully grown person like my size to fit in, but like, would it be big enough for like probably a halfling, maybe a small animal or a, like small a squirrel? Child. If you were a so small creature, squirrel. yeah, like a halfling or a gnome, you could like probably you could probably fit in there, but. Where, where are we going to find a squirrel around here? Yeah, where can we find a squirrel that could fit in a dumbwaiter? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't matter. The squirrel wouldn't be able to communicate with us unless we could, you know, maybe look through its eyes or something. I don't know. Yeah, he's going <laughs> to... I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just being facetious. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> it's my squirrel. <laughs> it's in my pocket. Yeah. All right, well... Don't... Just to be serious, I'm, I'm making that joke because I, when I walked into the dumbwaiter room, I'm like, oh my god, we actually have a chance of somebody having something that could fit in a dumbwaiter and using it. I'm like, oh, please, let's do it, please. But I wasn't going to suggest it because I wanted it to come organically from some somebody who hasn't run this before. <laughs> I think the first time I played Curse of Strahd, my goblin went in it. That's... <laughs> See, then they would have just put it up like halfway between a floor and then just lock it. <laughs> <laughs> well let's finish going to the floor and then back down to the library and that's probably where the monster shall be just in case there's Mr. Or Mrs. or child dursts on this floor Vio would you open another door sure why not ah, I, I will, the nothing else to do in this stupid house, house. I can think of a lot of reasons why not, but I'm not going to tell him. Uh, for some reason, the, the while I if I try to scroll the um, uh, my cursor further down or my icon further down, the map scrolls upward. Oh, you put you might have to refresh. So who's um? Okay, so okay, so which door are you opening? Via, which door? Uh, I'll go for the one on the left. Lucky left. Um, this one right here. That's, that's the only one you can see. You can't see this one. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah. Vio, yeah. as you walk by the suit of armor, um, its helmet suddenly like springs to life and looks at you and will attempt to shove you down the balcony. Oh, goody! Want you to. Wait, I'm sorry, what What just happened? What did I just miss? The suit of armor is trying to push me over the edge. Oh! It springs to life. Deck save? Uh, let's see here. A shove action would just be like a strength check, wouldn't it, Mark? The strength, uh, shove is the shover's athletics versus the shove ease. Athletics or acrobatics, same as a grapple. Okay, yeah, so it attempts to, to shove you. Strength first, resistance or slipperiness, essentially. Yep, so we're only acrobatics. He rolls a one. So <laughs> it, it lunges forward, tries to oh. shove you, and then immediately falls apart into little pieces, like the armor pieces fall off and scatter around the, on the floor. Man, this place is really good at scaring us. Huh. And then, oh, like, no, one no, little no, arm no, star no. reach for you to try to shove you, but it can't. I'll, I'll just kick. Leo, Leo, off. Leo! What happened? I, what did I, you do? Suit of armor fell apart. Uh, ki uh, he kicks one of the gauntlets over the side of the stairwell. <laughs> Clank. Does it dramatically like grab onto the side and just slowly? <laughs> and the other hand the like tries to reach for it. And it slowly like loses the grip and it falls. And the other hands just reaches out like no. 
<laughs> it was so pathetic an attempt. I'm not. I don't think he's even fully sure that it that it actually was animated. It just simply just fell apart. Yeah, he rolled a one. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I check this room. All right. It's like a um cleaning room or something. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> I'll show you the picture of the dead body that was dumped in here. Uh, dusty shells line the wall to this room. A few of the shells have folded sheets, blanket, and old bars of soap on them. A cobweb-covered broom leans against the far wall. Looks like just a linen room. And... Uh... In case one of them wants to come to investigate, I'll also check the other room. Oh, good, a hallway. All right. So anyone else gonna look in the um, the closet? There's also a door over here. If anyone wants to check that. Uh, you sounds like you volunteered. Might as well. I'm the only one I'm good for. May I open up this door in front of me, Joey? Yes. He's quick. He's quick at it. Yeah, if you, if you can click it, you can click it. Um, Fair enough. That's right. We'll have a lock on it if we can. Yeah. Uh, this appears to be a bathroom. Is there anything the necessarily only... special something about they... it? Something they act, they often forget to include yeah. in the in these house maps. Uh, this yeah, dark room it's... contains a wooden tub with clawed feet, a small iron stove with a kettle resting atop, and a barrel under a spigot on the east wall. A, cis a cistern on the roof used to collect rainwater, which was borne down a pipe to the spigot. However, the pumping no longer works. The plumbing no longer works. Plus, it's probably not even raining. Nothing in there, but... Uh... No, the rain The rain stopped, yeah, when you um, yeah. entered the house. Plus, there's a big dome of flesh over it, so... Yes, yes. Oh, that's now, oh, that's why it stopped. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I just got um, it as a DM. <laughs> a nice little bath bath uh, house in there. If uh, the water worked, another bedroom this way. All right, view, 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 view. Let's see here. Hey, it's a Vio. It's a Vio. Plays the violin. All right. Um, dust and cobwebs shroud this elegantly appointed bedroom. A large bed stands against the far wall. Its once opulent covering is now faded and threadbare. Besides the bed, a mildew-covered towel covers most of a dusty... Sorry. Besides the bed, a mildew-covered towel covers most of a dusty yellowed book on one of its two end tables. On the far side of the room, you can see a pair of two more, two more stained glass doors, their windows flecked with dirt and grime. On the left side stands an empty wardrobe, its doors slightly ajar. Mounted beside it stands a full-length mirror, its wooden frame carved to resemble ivy and berries. To the right, an empty doorway leads into a darkened nursery. You can see the silhouette of a crib, its quiet quiet form veiled by a hanging black shroud. A strange substance seems to be covered cover the floor beneath it. As you look around the room, you notice that the blankets atop the bed lift slightly away from the mattress, as though something is lying atop the mattress. Although something is lying atop the mattress beneath as you watch you can see the coverings almost um i don't know that word um it slowly rises and falls with a low rhythmic rustling uh type it in imperceptibly imperceptibly right so it's like a, it's it's almost yeah it's almost yeah, hard to bar notice yeah, yeah barely noticeable. Mm -hmm. Disregardless. Wait. What? No, that's. 
All right. Let's check it. Uh, going to grab the sheets at the bottom of the bed and tug. Vio, you are by yourself. They're within my distance. Her way over. It's fine. <laughs> so there's nothing beneath, beneath the covers as you lift them up. However, you do see a blood-stained mattress in a crude, crude hand and foot restraints made from barbed wire nailed to the four posts of the bed frames. Oh, that's awful. I found the husband's room. Is the husband in there? Not anymore. Well, I guess we should keep looking. This is uh, this is pretty wild. <laughs> um, and everyone walks in as well. It's like, this is fairly unsettling. That's the best way to put it, yes. Oh, look, a door. <laughs> <laughs> this is the door to the, uh, to, yeah, the nursery oh. that I mentioned before. Um, the air in the small nursery is strangely warm and tinged with a coppery <laughs> scent. Blood red runes cover the wall, arranged in a in concentric circles around the crib in the in the center which seems to have a name carved into its side. Strange flesh-like tumors have grown along the floor around the sparse in sparse clusters and slowly pulsate as if they're breathing. Looking down, you notice that a small object seems to have fallen beneath the crib. In the distance, you can faintly hear the sound of an infant's soft whimpering. Oh, that's... that's what uh, can I make out the name or word? Um, yes, the name is Walter. Walter. Right. Oh my god, I can't spell Walter. Um, this is mildly un. Oh, you want more? When you get closer to the to the to the uh, <laughs> um, the crib, you catch a glimpse of the objects that seem to have fallen mm -hmm. fallen off. Um, it seems to be a human finger with bits of strip strips of flesh bitten out of it. Oh, Ooh. finger food. Hmm. That seems. Do you think this beast ate the baby? Was that morbid? Oh, I'm sorry. That, hmm. what, like, I, what? I was thinking it. I was like, or like, okay, is it a, like a human, like adult finger? Or are we talking like baby fingers here? Yeah, well, actually, is it like a fully formed finger? Is this like a. It, it's a, it's a, um, adult size finger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, did the baby then eat the beast? Okay, like, what? <laughs> was the baby the beast? <laughs> Except I mean, it was happen. a child born of wed, oh, born out of wedlock. You know? Yes, this reminder. There's there's runes surrounding the crib. Um, little flesh like tumors growing on out. The floor. Yeah, we <laughs> there's just on? all this gross yeah. like viscera and shit around us, and we're just like gossiping about <laughs> the baby. wedlock. Can't, like, is it possible to get to the crib to open the the sheer sure, around yeah. it? Right. Yeah, without stepping on the living floor not really no okay then never mind it's i'll i'll hover over it's fine yeah. i was going to say ramaya you have wings and i assume that they're more for they're not for show well they're for whatever people please sir horace but i'll um i don't i'll just kind of like what that means <laughs> and you never will <laughs> she collides toward <laughs> the uh, yeah, just pats horace's shoulder you'll you'll know when you're older glide toward the crib without <laughs> hoofing the tumors and grossness. Um, who's who's hanging out in the in the main bedroom here? I would uh, imagine that uh, Minerva... Uh, I think every, everyone else, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who can't fly. Okay, yeah. Um, I, just mean, I just say, yeah, you two probably shouldn't be on the same spot. So. After the people, uh -huh. like, um, they say, so like, uh, there's, like, baby, not baby flesh, there's, um, this flesh and 
weird baby stuff in there. Um, the mirror that's on one side of the wall. Um, you see a reflection in there of a young woman. Is this in the baby room or the uh, the floral one in the main room? In the main room. Okay, that's... Uh... It's like this oh, ghostly oh. visage oh, of, a, wow. of a young that woman. That is right... Oh, God. Why is it moving? This is not moving. That's just where it is. Okay, uh, that's um, where the mirror uh, was. <laughs> oh! So no, like, you're fine. Spooky. In the no, mirror... You can't see that yet. No, I know. Jess <laughs> is saying that's spooky. I can't. <laughs> um, in, the, um, in the mirror, you see a spirit of a pale, skeletally thin young woman with all of her fingers and toes removed, her eyes shown shut, and her lips and teeth torn from her mouth. Countless knife-thin scars line her entire body, including the flesh around her wrists and ankles, and her hair has been carelessly hacked to stubble. And despite uh, her I... grotesque look, you don't really sense any malice about her. She just appears there and begins watching you. Yeah, oh, divine, divine sense. sense. <laughs> uh, I can detect good and evil. Until my next turn, I can sense anything affected by the hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Um, it is... Yeah, you sense undead within the mirror. Yeah, that's... Um... And, and, and to be frank, like... It's, like, everywhere in this house. There's some sort of, like, yeah. supernatural stuff going on. Yeah, I think it just gave yourself a headache. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. when you did it, it's oh. like, it just resonated throughout your brain. Like you yeah. put someone else's glasses on, and it... Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. I'm gonna smash the mirror. What? Um, what? No, what? Dude, dude. Evil, evil. It's evil. Well, no, it's... Didn't okay, Joe? Didn't you say that we, even though it's like hideous okay. visage, it didn't seem like scary? Well, I mean, it's scary looking, but it okay. like it's yeah, obviously right. just like observing. Because I would be has, like, no, it has no eyes and it's looking at us. Yeah, but that's like, yeah, look at a hey, look at it exactly. How could it hurt us? It's Can you hurt us? Hurt. I say to the thing. Does she nod or shake her head? Um, <laughs> she probably looks at you. <laughs> you, you say can can you hurt us? Can you hurt us? Um, she nods. Well, maybe don't I, like I don't do know. Do you want to? She shakes her head. There you go then. That's more important. Yeah. Who are you talking to out there? <clears throat> There's a the ghost in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, ask her if she knows what this weird baby room is about. Uh, or if she knows know anything the... about the beast. I don't, I don't think she's going to really be able talk. to answer anything that is not binary, that is a yes or no answer for various oh. reasons of lack of mouth. Uh, did did Ramea mention the, the finger, by the way? They were talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, and uh, I think she's who who that finger is. Oh, I, oh, where that came from. Ask her to hold up her hands. No, we can see yeah. from here. Yeah, she, oh, okay. she holds yeah, up her hands, yeah. and there's this stubs. Yeah, she oh. miss, she's missing more than one. Oh, Just, is that Car Cla Cla Is that Clara? Are, are you Clara? Oh. She nods. Oh. It's a two-second yeah. delay. She might be very far away. <laughs> um. Process. It's like thinking, thinking, <laughs> thinking. <laughs> she, she um, kind of nods. The ghost of Chat GPT. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe she is, yes. The mirror is on dial up. Oh. <laughs> well. Did the, uh, did the lady of the house do this to you? Um. Do you say lady of the house? Uh, yeah. I, honestly, as a person, I forget yeah. the. Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yeah. Okay, uh, it does Elizabeth. Did Elizabeth do this to you? She like takes a almost like a step back and she looks afraid. She starts looking around as if she could appear at any moment. Uh, Wait, is she no still... here with us? Don't don't you worry. Gru's gonna be like, "Wait, is she still here?" Um, oh, yeah, check yeah. Out the closet next to you. 
Is she still here? She nods. Like, this Elizabeth lady does not seem cool. No, she seems quite uncool, if you would ask me. Did one, one of you the one of you mention the the baby? Um, or like I the asked, the crib? Uh, as, yeah, as Ramaya's like, sh should I remove the sh shroud from the crib, or is this a, probably not a good idea, hmm. considering the, the the dead ghost mother is in the mirror? As you mentioned, <laughs> like the baby's yes, crib, no. her her fear you can tell turns to sadness as she hears about the baby. Uh, she seems sad. Um, about the baby, uh, is, can, uh, what? Well, I don't think baby... it's still there, and as I say that, I'm gonna turn around and look to the crib. Uh, hmm. uh, it's full of chocolate. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. I feel like I just unleashed hell. So I will, um... Nothing in the crib. Oh. Um, but, but something I, I forgot to say is that um, the, the finger you found is a woman's finger. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, like, little tiny bite marks is what made the, uh... Like... The... the Strips of flesh, like little, little tiny teeth. Like little baby sized teeth? <laughs> yes. Evil. Evil. Oh. Well, I mean, baby's got a teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Robaya will share that. Upon closer inspection, it looks like this figure was bitten by little gnarly baby teeth. <laughs> little laugh. radical she baby said, teeth. <laughs> she doesn't say it laugh. Audacious <laughs> baby teeth. <laughs> uh, um, Lady in the Mirror, does, uh, was your baby a demon? Yeah. <laughs> Was this baby a demon? We don't know if it's her baby. Or I'm not. going to assume. I'm going to come out into the room now if, if that's uh, okay. I'll hover back out since there's nothing in the crib. Yeah, I'm going to have to yeah. give you space so we don't oh. double up. Thank you, thank you. I am in the back. There we you go. you say, uh, is your baby a demon? The sadness again turns to fear. And she will step out, not out of the mirror, like step, step back so she's no longer visible in the mirror. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you spooked her away. But the mirror will swing forward. Oh. Uh. Um, Smacks Horace right in the head. Re oh. <laughs> revealing <laughs> a, um, a secret passage. <gasps> and the window. Oh. Secret passage. Oh. I was just about to ask, where else could we look? I, I, I thought we explored everywhere. Uh, and, uh, I would I would assume before we go this way, we may want to check out what that amber piece was yeah. with. Yeah, so... Um, I, I think that was where it was being stored. Um, it, but the thing you, meant, you read uh, talked about holding uh, the amber up to it. Yes. Yeah, so this is a good place to stop. Because we are at a three-hour mark, but if you want to quickly go to the secret room, oh, just yes, it's just quick. Yeah, it's like be yeah, right back, ghost room lady. Room. I appreciate yeah. your secret passage, but we gotta. We get another <laughs> secret passage. We have Sorry, another. I called your baby a demon. <laughs> get get <laughs> out of here, lady! You're not. You walk away. You shouldn't be on the map anymore. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna. It go, does it lead to the conservatory? I'm not going to bother uh, moving you guys, but if you want to go to the, the library one before we stop. Yeah, sure. let's do the, the library. Okay. Yes, please. Library. <laughs> the, the little ghost is like, my, my tunnel. Come on. What the hell, guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll uh, go back, and as you... Um... Uh, let's see here. If I'm thinking. Right. Um, you place the amber shard into a little niche. 
and it up it pulsates pulsates for a moment and then click the secret door opens we might need to bring us down there uh it's not it's not important um okay fine <laughs> uh this small hidden room is packed with bookshelf bookshelves grown um Packed with bookshelves, groaning with old and ominous-looking leather-bound tomes. A heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet stands against the south wall, its lid half-closed. Sticking out of the chest, its ribs and head cop and... Hold on, let's make sure... Okay, yeah. Sorry, it's just... just words, up for a moment. Words, we understand. A heavy wooden chest with... Clawed iron feet stands against the south wall, its lid half closed. Sticking out of the chest, its ribs and head caught between caught beneath its lid is a skeleton in the leather armor. Oh yeah, totally not interesting, not important to see. <laughs> I didn't want to move all you guys down there. That's I know. <laughs> just take just take a screenshot. <laughs> um uh, uh... What do you see in there? Uh, whoever went first. Yeah, I, I shall move you all down. Books. I made sure you're the one keeping the pendant, so you're the one who's looking at... That's true, I will... Uh... I think it's oh, totally think dangerous to here... Well, the good news is we got here second. There, door's now open. The, the bad news is we got here second. The good news is we got here second. step and investigate the uh the chest and skeleton without really touching it just sort of observing yeah let's see here uh, do -do -do. hold on these things say two different things i'm just reading it over yeah, just pick which one sounds cooler. Okay, yeah. Um, you notice that the skeleton has three darts in its armor. Um, he seemed to have triggered a poison trap when he opened up the chest. Um, Amateur. In clutched in the skeleton's in clutched in the skeleton's left hand is a letter. I will uh, I will say step back, Miss Minerva. This might still be active. I will step up and I will open the rest of the chest. Yep. <laughs> we'll step uh, out of range. Be like, if you say so. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> the chest is um, no longer trapped. Yes. It's okay, it's deactivated. But you do well, just to make sure. So, okay. in, in addition to the, uh, the the letter the skeleton was holding, um, you do see three black books with leather covers worth 25 gold pieces each. Three spell scrolls. Um... Of bless protection from poison and spiritual weapon, a deed to the house, and a signed will. We just have well. a deed to the house. <laughs> we could open up a tavern. I'm adding these to the uh, shared inventory. Um, we can split up the spell scrolls next week if we need. Quick look um, over the will. Um, you see that uh, it's signed by Gustav and Elizabeth, and of uh, the a house, a windmill, and other family property to Rosavalda and Thorbolt Durst in the event of their parents' death. A lot of windmill imagery around here. You know, I wouldn't assume that with really anything. They're just very normal. I'm Could not be... sure why they had so many windmills. Even the sword had a windmill theme in it. But it's likely the family emblem. Perhaps these come from a uh, 
A long family of millers. And as for the letter he was holding. Who wants to read this one? Uh, well, I picked it up again, so we'll go ahead and do it. My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a path of immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, no, however many souls you have bled, bled on your hidden altar, whomever, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the one who brought me this beautiful to this beautiful land. You are but a worm writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed, your fortune spent. Your husband took solace in the bosom of another woman, sired a bastard son, and drove you to abandon love for madness. Cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strahd von Zarevich. <gasps> they said the I name was the right. Oh, yeah. They said the name! <laughs> that means the game ends, right? Yeah. <laughs> Solve the mystery, yes! <laughs> now we can just will... walk out of the flesh dome. <laughs> Joey, I would like to pick up those three darts. Sure. Added to my inventory. Sir Horace is actually darting on. Are they magical darts? Is one maybe a dart of warning? Hmm. Well, seemed to be poison darts at one point, but the poison is long since. I lick, I lick the, uh, the the tip. Is the poison gone then? Yeah, poison's gone. Yeah. Not poisonous anymore. They were still inside of somebody, Sir Horace, so please keep that mouth away from me. I, I was not going to uh, use my mouth on you, Minerva. Okay, but don't put it on me either, okay? Cool? Suppose I can agree to that. Wait, Does anybody wait, else want me to agree answer? to not having my mouth on them? Do we all want that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. everyone puts their hands up. Right. Does D's <laughs> like, jump out of your list. pocket? <laughs> Does D's jump out of your pocket and just yeah, nod? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's agreed. There shall be no <laughs> mouth to mouth. <laughs> all right, so who is Strahd? And why is our whole thing about torturing multiple people? It doesn't seem like it was just poor Clara. It was many people. What I said earlier, it's got to be the ghost of this tortured woman, Elizabeth, is now stuck in this sort of loop on death, and she has to... Uh, she, is, she is never satiated. She just has to keep doing it do until think, some of us stop her. Do you That's think maybe she, here. she also killed her husband? I have no doubt that was the first one. Probably drove her insane. Drove her killed mad. Killed her husband. Killed his mistress. Their bastard child. Probably jumped off the balcony in sorrow. And then the house reclaimed her and has stuck her in this loop. Or no getting... she's just fucking crazy. Yeah, she could just be in like, the walls or something, right? She's living in the goddamn walls. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Game over. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, I, I think we're good, though. Like, there's, like, five of us and, like, one of her. And we have, like, weapons. I don't think the mistress had, like, even a knife on her. You know, it's not the Unless she left it in the bed. <laughs> 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 mm, that's true. He did. She did say something about the beast, though. I don't yeah, think I she is the beast. Well, they said something was under the house. But there was no basement door. Maybe that's where that secret passage led. I, it's like I a secret snuck back in. staircase. I, well, I looked in and it went up. Maybe it looks like you're going up, but you're really going down. <laughs> yeah, remember the first stairs? No, <laughs> it, um, the stairs did seem to be going. The stairs were leading upward. Then, should we walk up it backwards? I think we can just walk up it perfectly normal and not <laughs> wait until everyone else's time. It's entirely possible that there's no door to the cellar down. In, inside the house, it might be outside. If it's a root uh, cellar, probably. Could do that, then, well. How do we get out we there to look, though? Yeah. That's fair. Right, I'll move you I back. think maybe we should go back through that secret tunnel, that poor woman. Oh, move you back up here. Trying to lead us Whoa. to the cellar. And as you. Um, Go back upstairs. 
Oh, you hear the grandfather clock strike eight o'clock. But I think that's where we'll end for tonight. I think we actually did a fair amount of progress. Mm -hmm. I assume, yeah. We did pretty okay. Right, right Joey? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is for, for three hours. This is roughly. No, what you it, generally it's only been two hours. <laughs> three <laughs> hours of player gameplay because when, our combat obviously only took. When you come back seven. in, the, the nursemaid is, um, is like. Stopping her foot like an impatient, like took you long yeah. enough. I've been waiting Looking here. Looking at her sundial watch. Yeah. <laughs> He's where <are> you go. <laughs> Motioning with her nubs, like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's roll. Let's roll call for tonight. Yay! Good first session. <laughs> well, look, it's Strahd who was mentioned in the in the letter. I'm sure he's just a regular nice guy. Yeah. He seemed like a jerk. Um, in case you didn't notice, all the letters are should be in your your um your journal here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I found them. Yep. Hey, thank they you. Only, they all need pictures. I wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> I would request at least get like a little backpack to put on, on the shared inventory just to separate that from just random. Okay, I'll handouts. do that. Thank you, I Joey. Do. Stop.